Amsterdam. One of the most historic, inspiring, and remarkable cities in all of Europe. A city of culture, a city of beauty, a city of kindness. And tonight, Amsterdam once again becomes a city of high-level, professional sanctioned violence. Levels Fight League proudly presents LFL 11, our grandest event yet, from epic media haven event space right by the beautiful port of Amsterdam. With 20 of the highly skilled artists of combat doing battle and two LFL world titles on the line. A featured bout showcases homegrown undefeated middleweight prospect Elaine Vanderman, who has a 100% finish rate in his toughest test to date against Georgian powerhouse Georgie Cavaldis, who is a brutal finisher in his own right. Our penultimate fight is the first of two awesome world title fights as a Dutch striking machine looks to avenge a loss against a well-rounded artist of combat when the baby-faced assassin Yusri Belgarui and Ahmed Sami do battle for the LFL light heavyweight title. And in our main event, LFL heavyweight champion Mario Pinto defends his title and his clinically vicious undefeated streak of violence against the true, gritty, aggressive juggernaut in Turkish heavyweight Kasim Aras. The time for talk is done. Now it's time for heart, skill, will, guts, and glory. It's time for the visceral beauty of combat. LFL 11, baby. Remember, if it ain't Dutch, it ain't much. Enjoy the hostilities, my friends. Welcome viewers around the world to Levels Fight League, the new home of European MMA, where we're showcasing and highlighting the finest fighters from the continent and the world in general. We're coming at you live from Media Haven on the River Eye in the center of historic Amsterdam, one of the fight capitals of the world. So tonight we have LFL 11, our most fascinating and exciting event, maybe of all time. Tonight, topping this card, we have two title bouts where some BMOFs are gonna go back to back and throw some beefy hands down with the light heavyweight and heavyweight straps on the line. My name's Callum, I'll be your host and commentator this evening. And with me on my right, we have martial, uh, we have martial arts expert, analyst extraordinaire, Robin Black. And to my left, we have Stefan Struve, UFC and MMA heavyweight legend. So, Robin, let's talk our main event. We have Pinto versus Aras for the heavyweight strap. Mario Pinto has come up through LFL. He's really been a fantastic fighter. Hey, man, you just go back uh, a calendar year, and he defeated three heavyweights in one night to win the heavyweight title. He has since defended it and looks to do so again. Very complex fighter. He moves beautifully to fight the way he fights, putting himself in danger to draw your weapons. That is part biology, your senses speaking to your motor cortex, speaking to your body very, very quickly. But it's also about decisiveness. He's decisive enough to take the risks he needs to take to create these wonderful moments. How do you beat a guy like this? You put him on his back and you elbow his face in. And Aras is a specialist at doing just that. He's got the lifetime skill set to do it and he's got the body type to do it. It is a sick main event. Yeah, one thing we can guarantee is going to be a banger and it's going to be Pinto's hardest test yet. But Stefan, let's not sleep on the co-main event either for the vacant light heavyweight belt. Mm -hmm. Belgari versus Sami, a little bit of a grudge match, right? Yeah, in the first match, Belgari was far from happy with, what, with his performance over there. He was inactive. He was waiting for Sami way too much. We've seen him very active over here after that, scoring two, two beautiful knockouts. I think he's going to want to do that today. Put Sami with his back against the fence, hunt him down, and look for the knockout again. And Yusri has had an incredible LFL run so far, yep. really seeing him evolve as a kickboxer and add MMA elements into his game. Yeah, and he needs to get more comfortable, of course, with the small gloves and the distance is different. We know how good a striker he is. We've seen that he has, you know, incredible skills. He sees something and he acts on it right away. He's incredibly fast for his height, especially. He's got beautiful kicks, he's got beautiful knees he used in his last fight against Kvelice, who we're seeing fighting again tonight as well. So he, he really got comfortable. I think we're going to see a, a much better Yusri against Sami tonight. 
it's going to be fantastic, that is for sure. And on the topic of Khalifzi, which we're seeing Yushi's yeah. fight on the end here, and that's what I love about LFL cards, is they are stacked with so much, so many brilliant fights. Khalifzi here is going to be in one of our other picks for the evening, where Elaine van der Merkt is going to be facing him in the penultimate, penultimate fight, should we call it, Robin? <laughs> yeah, this is a fun one, right? And and Donovan has done an awesome job of matching these two. Elaine Vandermerkt is undefeated, and he finishes everybody. But he's, he's built his game, and it's a good game, built on advanced fundamentals. He just does the small things really, really well. Georgie is weird. Georgie breaks all the rules, colors outside the lines, and that can be very, very hard to fight. And I think that's the dynamic, the advanced fundamentals on one side, there you see right there, and on the other side, this confusing collection of skills. Those two things are gonna come together to make a really interesting dynamic. Yeah, you can't argue against someone who has seven pro fights and seven finishes in those pro fights with only a single one coming out of the first round. And Van der Merkt is a fighter for, yeah, for the ages, as one to look after and one that I'm so excited to see tonight. But he will, it will be hard for him to get to Georgie because Georgie is just so awesome odd and unpredictable. And of course, like I was saying, we have even more exciting fights than that. Yes, sir. For example, we have Clyde Brunswijk, the uh -huh. Dutch kickboxing legend, going up against Lucas Kolka. Yeah. So we've really seen Brunswijk move from being like a kickboxer in LFL 1 with not much ground game into someone who won his last LFL fight via wrestling. Yeah, he took his opponent down. His last opponent was a really good striker as well, and we've really seen him develop. His, skill, his skills are getting better and better, and today he's fighting a very tough grappler in Kulpa. So it's going to be very interesting to see if he can stop the takedowns. If he gets to his back, can he get back up? Because he's an amazing striker. He needs to keep the distance and pick Kulpa apart from a distance, and if he does that, it's going to be a good night for him. It's definitely here. So let's have a little moment to remind and familiarize ourselves with the rule set of MMA. So as we can see here, eight of the 10 fights that we have tonight will be three rounds of five minutes. But the two fights, the two final fights, the two championship bouts, these will be five rounds of five minutes for light heavyweight and heavyweight title. As we can see, some broad rules, no kicking to the head of the grounded opponent, no strikes to the spine or back of the head, and no holding fences or gloves. One key thing to look out for for all viewers at home is the scoring criteria. Here at LFL, we judge it by effective striking and kicking and grappling, aggressiveness, and how the arena is controlled. So for decision fights, these are the points that you need to be watching. Some other interesting elements as well is we have no strikes to the back of the head, no spikes in terms of throws down, and you'll be penalized for or holding fingers outstretched. Exactly, I don't want any of that. We need to watch the fights, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's get into this absolute smorgasbord of glorious combat sports at LFL 11. Fights, please. For the Levels Fight League. So here we go. Yeah, bitch, we got the boss. Oh, I'm not here to try and get points. I'm here to knock people the fuck up. Yay! Yay! gentlemen in the audience, when viewers from all over the world, I welcome you live from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, for the Levels Fight League. The first LFL fight of this evening is in the featherweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner, representing Tajikistan and Germany, Aliamin Okira! Nice little fact for everyone. Okirov is the youngest fighter on our LFL card tonight. Stefan, what does this sort of young age do as someone who was, uh, you know, a bit of a wunderkind himself in MMA? Well, you know, he's very young, but he's got a, a ton of experience. He's already, already a Sambo champion at his age, undefeated at pro and amateur. It doesn't really matter if, the young, if you're the youngest fighter, it's how much you believe yeah. in yourself, how much you want that. And especially at that age, I wanted it really, really bad. And, same thing goes for this young man. 
And, and the wanting it isn't just the wanting to win, but wanting to get improved constantly. These young, driven fighters get more out of one hour of training than, than some other people do because they're just sponges to, he, to soak it up. He also seems like a very mature kid. Uh, yeah, excited to see him fight. Yeah, 21 years old, and you tell by uh, some of the cauliflower on those ears, Robin, that this is a man who has maybe had a lot of hours of experience, even at his tender age. Combat Sambo is an awesome martial art. I, oh, yeah. I've got into breaking some of it down on my own platforms. And uh, one of the things in the last number of years that is a part of much of uh, Combat Sambo is headbutts. You can headbutt yeah. now in it. And, uh, you know, you send a kid in, look, yeah, you're right, look at those years. To deal with full contact fighting, including headbutts from a teenager, he comes in here ready to fight at this level. And in many ways as well, this is a this is a classic MMA fight. This is a man with Okirov, who's a grappler. That's his background. And then we have uh, Grial, who will be coming in shortly, who is a kickboxer by trade. It's, I still love. I still yeah. love. We still get these matchups today. a kickboxer by trade and he was a little bit spicy in the build-up to this fight as well he said in comments that he saw absolutely nothing to be concerned about from uh, Okirov who in the back and forth didn't take too kindly to it but he's got a, a lot of confidence there yeah. when I see that man I see a lot of issues possibly yeah, yeah I wouldn't want to fight him yeah if you see the beard without the mustache and yeah. the cauliflower in. and the ears no I'm good yeah <laughs> The uh, confidence is an excellent thing, but it is best when it is a result of work, of uh -huh. the work that you did that made you confident. And we only know if that's the case when we see him come in here and fight, which is why fights like this are so interesting. But man, uh, when, when guys are in their 20s, there's a different type of confidence. Sometimes it's earned, and sometimes it just develops in them, and uh, you gotta prove it. Yeah, and both of these young men are gonna be confident. It'll be interesting because in, in some of his previous fights, Kuriyal, I looked and went watch one from Finn Larson. He controlled the ground game very effectively. So even though we like to talk sometimes about this grappling versus striking, these days it's nowhere near as yeah. black and white as that. I think uh, today, you know, pretty much everything stands with his takedown defense because this man is going to test it. He's got a kickboxing background, but his coach is a really good grappler. Orlando Wilson Prince, who is a Cage Warriors lightweight. He's got a couple wins in Cage Warriors. Excellent grappler. So I'm really looking forward to this fight. Yeah, it, it's interesting when, you know, the inevitable takedowns happen. Can you stop the takedown? If you do not stop the takedown, can you be attacking off your back or can you get back up? And you need answers to those three questions. Well, introducing first the man fighting out of the blue corner. 21 years old, stands in at 5 feet, 10 inches, 178 centimeters. With a professional piece, he's representing RFS Saarbrücken. Uh, Al Yamin Akira! <laughs> well, here's opponent in the red corner from the Netherlands, 28 years old. Stands in at 5 feet 9 inches, 175 centimeters. Two fights on his record, one victory, one defeat, representing Team Flex. Daichi Kudia! This fight is not really about attributes. They're very similar in attributes. It's going to be about tactics and strategy and approach. That's what's going to define this fight. Well, this LL. Three rounds of Here we go. Gentlemen, you know the rules. Fight hard, fight clear. This is to my comments all the time. No questions. Touch gloves if you want. Step back. The opening fight of LFL 11. We have Okirov with the blue tape on his gloves and the gray black shorts. Let's go! Fighting Kuriyal in the full orange with the red tape. 
how long before Okirov goes for the first takedown, guys? Uh, gonna get open up. And it is oh, surprising. Look at this. And And we can probably assume that Okarov was not expecting that either. No, but you see React immediately strips off the one hand with his knee. You know, you do want, it's great if you can introduce some, a variable like this, if you're Korea, but you can also get reversed oh, because, this. yeah, you are the one. But it has been initiated now, and so it's an interesting strategy. Very smooth, the way he turned that around. Mm. Outside trip. But Korea's got him back against the fence again. Interesting little chess match here, Robin. Mm. Oh, tremendous athletes too, guys. Yeah, you, I like this out of Korea. Uh, the uh, Akarov hands closed. He's going to keep him there for a while as he tries to strip different uh, different trips to the inside and the outside. And another reversal there. And a little a foot stomp there, and another one by uh, Kuriao. Something you don't see that often. The heel bone to the calf, you, you notice a, how small a muscle a calf is, and there, there's a nerve that runs Man. through it. Those hurt. Yeah. He's off balance when he chose him, though. Yeah, he's got him, though, now. He's got the leg hook. Can he turn it to his right? Oh, he's out. Shit, nope. Good Good stuff. Kuriao. Kuriao's yeah. strong, man. Yeah, he is. And he's not afraid here. He's completely comfortable. He does a really good job balancing. And then he throws it again, man. Yeah, I like that. You don't see it a lot, no, but it's, it's there. Making, it's making an almighty resounding whack when it hits as well. He's making the most out of that, that deep underhook on his left side. Doing a really good job keeping his shoulder there. That the clenched hands is, is something that's hard for him to address because of where the hands are clenched. So, you know, you could stay here for three minutes Neither guy can really do much from this oh. position, it seems like. But there's been enough action, so the referee is unlikely to get in and separate it right now. But you can see he's having a little look in the corner there. And, and the action is small, heels to calves and stomps, but they're all, it's all from Korea. Okirev has looked at the look of Korea again, obviously looking for that takedown. He's trying to go to, to the back, there it is. He's also got the left hand yep. trapped. Yeah, I think you see the, the left hand of Korea. You can see the hip. It's, he had trapped momentarily. Yeah. Uh, turning. A good job by Korea there. Nice job. This is fatiguing. This is a tiring way to uh, enter the first three minutes of a fight. It slows down. It will may slow down your ability to flow later. Anyone who's been to a jiu-jitsu class or wrestled their sibling can probably contend to that. But they're both in really good shape. Okurov not really doing much though with no. his, his body lock. He can't really do much, and he's also being defensive because Kuro instigated this. Yeah. This is a, a cool one for a judge. I mean, if you're judging, he's got it. Oh, yeah. Almost got the takedown. Nice job by Kuro there. Yeah. Good defense. If you're judging honestly, Kuro is the one doing something, yep. and through three and a half minutes, you'd be giving him this round so far. Yet he, he's had the more effective position. He's effectively controlled the fighting area a smidge more. And he's punching and kicking when there's an opening to do so. And uh, Okarov is just closing his, fit, his hands and really wants a takedown. An interesting there decision go. there by the referee to break them when Kirill was landing some pretty hard sounding shots into Okarov's gut. Good blitz there by Okarov. Yeah. A few of those shots connected. Nice it's a calf. great choice, right back down to that calf. Oh, that right hand over the top from Correll was in deep, and he's back in on a on a grappling exchange. This must be a deliberate choice by his coach, Robin. Yeah, unexpected, and unexpected is awesome when it works, and it is working. If you've seen his coach fight, though, not surprising that mm. he's doing this, because his coach is, coach is really good grappler, good takedowns, good top control, so... The, the he also, we talked about his confidence at the beginning. There's nothing more confident than saying, yeah, I'm going to put the fight where you're best. I'm going to voluntarily put the fight into a grappling exchange, which is how you want to win this fight. That's really, really confident. The John Jones technique of I'll beat you where you're best. Yeah. That's a different level. Oh, of course. You know? It's a different level of thinking. Oh, oh yeah. beautiful throw there. 
Tucker late. Love using that Sambo background. Too late, presumably, to, to be the difference in the round. Break. But uh, it shows yeah, he can get it at any time. But right at the end as well, when the judges remember it mm. the most. Yeah. I think if you're a highly trained judge, you would see that out for Korea. Um, but you're right. The judges are humans, and humans are impressed with the things they saw most recently. The biggest action in the first round were the, the, the heel kicks. Yeah. Shall we call them that? Yeah. To the calf of Kirill. But then this beautiful throw by Okarov, man. Mm -hmm. And Kirill also had a few nice uppercuts into his sto into Okarev's stomach yep. as well, which helped. But yeah, it would be most likely, even though I wouldn't put money on it, it'd be most likely Kirill coming out of that round. But yeah, we'll see this toss left. Just turn. And look at that. Really nice. I love seeing these throws in MMA. But it was late, very late in, in Yeah, he couldn't round. really do much with it. But it is a statement, and he will take mm. that confidence with him into the second round, that he can take him down with his throws. And do you think that's what his corner will be telling him? Yeah, go back to your bread and butter, of course. But he needs to be, one, be the one who instigates it. Instead of being with his back against the fence, second like dance. most of the first round, the he needs round. to be the one you know, instigating the but clinch and going to the legs. And if you're Daesh now, Daesh Karel, you you really can go back to the, to the opposite strategy now. You've proven you can wrestle with him and presumably won around with it. Now, you know, throw punches and kicks and keep it in a gap. Kuro's got really good pressure, man. He does. When he comes forward, you go back. But he's gone back, Kirill, to the clinching, the grappling. He obviously thinks he can find an advantage there. Yep. Yeah, he's not, not afraid after that throw to go back there. And Okurov did a really good job using Kuril's pressure mm. to turn it into that throw. Yes, very good observation. He's putting a lot of pressure forward. You see his feet planted in the mat, and that's exactly what Okurov used. Nice shoulder strike thrown in there as well. Out of way, now Okurov trying to attack. His knee is here. Oh, nice. Yeah. Kuril is good at He's, bouncing, man. Very. Yeah. Very good to see that. Yeah, it's just awareness, like his his sort of fingertip knowledge of wrestling is really good. Yep. You know, he's not thinking, he's just he's just responding. Guys, action, you need to work. But the referee being you know, very Dutch about it, wanting to see more action, more stand-up. I, I thought Daniel, uh, our referee, handled that perfectly in round one. Kept it, let them work as long as it was until you came to the place where you just really had to separate him, and he seems to be thinking the same here. Yep. Because there's work going on in here. Those knees hurt. There's, you're fatiguing your opponent. Yeah, you're weighing your body weight on them, you're just making them work, carry you a little bit. I like that. He'll hit that calf with anything. An elbow, a heel, a hammer fist. And it hurts, man. It Can't does. blame him. Yeah. I'm just surprised that Akurov is keeping his hands closed the entire yeah. time. I want to see him open his hands. I want to see him, you know, go to other takedowns. Yeah, when his hands are closed, he, he's saying, I'm going to try to get a position to take you down. I'm not going to deviate from that with a punch or an elbow or anything. And it's, it's more predictable. But if he gets the takedown with three minutes left, he'll do a lot with it. Then we'll just shut up. Yeah. He was very really close good there, defense Rockerall. again. Kuril's balance is really, really good. Yeah, his proprioception, just a sense of where he is, you know, is, is really, really nice. It's just a really good athletic skill. Like, this is wrestling, yes, but it's also just athletic body awareness. I like what Akrov is doing here now with his head. Mm -hmm. Putting it under the chin of Coril and annoying him, it, it hurts a lot when you do it at the right way. It's, it's, um, it, it takes energy for you as well to keep your head there the entire time, but you create openings for takedowns. And the force movement. Exactly, and like when he has his hands closed like that, he didn't have his head in that position, nothing was happening, and now he's back to it. Good, good elbow of a uh, shoulder strike there by Coril. Win or lose, you're going to look at this now and go, I don't want to fight Correa. Like, if you thought on paper he was a, a kickboxer, now you see how well he's doing here into these positions. He's a hard hard guy to fight. He's doing well clinch wrestling and sambo champion. Yeah. Have fun fighting that guy. Yeah. I want to see a striking, though. I want to see him showcase some of that. Yeah, it's, it's time now. If, if he could separate, but instead, it's trending towards him ending up on his back because 
Okarov's just so committed and Stop patient, guys. super patient. Okay. Maybe right. too patient in that one. Guys, come, come to me. We need to work, okay? Fight. Okay, and now we have a chance, Stefan, to see if uh, Correal has a throw some strikes, but there we go. Okarev straight in for the shoot, and it's, we're back into the clinch battle. Yep. A minute left in this round. And it's pretty tough to judge Robin who you'd give this uh, round to so far. Yeah, Carrillo's still the one working. If if you're if all else is in doubt, who's doing more work? And the answer is him. And even as we're saying it, you're seeing there's some knees, there's the odd, you know, the odd hammer fist. There's, but yeah, it's a much closer round I think than round one was. And you also just don't want to find yourself losing a decision if you're either of these guys in this fight. And both you could lose it. He's got his hands locked now. Good job by Alcaraz here. Get the, the arms, which were locked, over his butt, back to his back, and now he's using the fence again. For me, like a round like this, we could just call it a draw. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's so hard to decide who you're going to give it to. Oh, good elbows. Yeah, nice shots coming in. That, that helps you decide who you're going to give it to. Don't Especially in the last 10 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Remember, round one, the last 10 seconds was a takedown. No, but this game. time, round oh, two, man. some vicious elbows. Oh, want to see more of that. Oh. A fascinating back and forth round there, played out like a physical chess match. Tough to say as we're talking about the end, who's gonna win it, draw potentially, but yeah. basically we're going into the third round with either fighter being able to take go forward. If I'm Okarov's coach, I'm definitely telling him we've lost both those rounds. Yeah, no, for he, sure. He may you not see the look in his eyes when he when they uh, let go and the end of Ray yeah. walked this way, he yeah. was like, whoa. Yeah, well those, he got, he got those a little locked, I think. the temple, man. Yeah, and those, those were very powerful. In it's my opinion, Kirill won the round yeah. with, with that series. Yeah, if you were in doubt before, you know, he, he elbowed him six, seven times in the temple yep. on the way out. If you're Okarov's co coach, you're like, we're down, we, we, need to, we need to finish. And if you're Seven Correll's minutes. coach, you know, you so might be split. I would think fight. he's up to, but you might tell him he's split and he needs to win the round. You need if, to work more than a clean. Okarov, you, you want to tell him he needs to finish. Clean. You could make it a, an argument for the coach saying, we've got the first one, second one's on the fence. It could go either way. Another warning from Daniel Sharidi to start the round. Some big shots. Here we are, a third and final round of our first fight on LFL 11. Five minutes to decide who takes this victory in the featherweight division. Now it's Akriya landing a good elbow there. Kriya going down towards the legs, trying to get that leg. Yeah, pick that. From the mat, pick it up and put him on his butt. He's got a grip. Right hand to left blade of foot. Yeah. No. He, he put it between the fence and the mat. It's stuck. Yeah. It's kind of legal to do that, to just... Legal kind, cheating. Yeah, exactly. Just sort of slide your, your blade in there. It's yeah. not illegal. It's a gray area. Yeah. Let's, say, let's say that. Smart is what it is. It's very smart. Until Games. you're stuck and you can't leave. Ref is going to be looking at the action again for yeah. sure if uh, Correo doesn't start throwing some strikes here. I think he's going to step in sooner if not much is happening now in this third round. Yeah. Trying to go for that Uchimata yeah. again. He's got oh, a nice, oh. nice trip. Great job by Correo there. Lovely yeah. reversal when Okarov there was trying for the Uchimata and uh, Kirill, as you said, Robin, very athletic with his body in motion. He's got the right arm. No, the arm is working its way back in the hip. Uh, he could have crucifixed that arm had he chosen. Okarov's trying to get to his knees, I think. Yeah, I get all of the wrist, but get, get hammer fist there by Kirill. Looking for a wrist right. Yeah, knee on bicep, maybe. Oh, nice short elbow there, powerful. Beautiful. Yeah. He's getting Kirill's head just getting nice and gnarly into the jaw of Okarov. It's a real skill to have not much room to throw elbows and punches and be able to use that small space to do a lot of damage. Yeah, especially time it when your opponent doesn't expect it. Break the rhythm and then wait for the right opportunities. Pressing that head downwards, yeah. looking to land more big elbows. Okarov might try to swing for an armbar, but I think that's risky. You might get past. 
but at, but at this stage, Robin, when yeah. this might have already sorted the round for him, and Kirill shown himself to be a very strong grappler that would be tough to get out of this situation, maybe that's the sort of thing you need, Al Krav needs to try for if he's going to get the win. He needs to open his legs. Yeah. Right now, that's not doing anything for him. He's got his, his neck jammed into the fence. And he's trying to slide for the arm yeah. right now. You see him there. Nope. And that's what I was saying. It, it can get you past, and there's a punch down the alley here. Those punches are rough coming down the alley. And Kirill throwing some strikes with vehement intent. Very bad position to be in here with your opponent standing over you. And a very good position to feel yeah. on the top. It's it's a very strong, confident position. You're not in danger, and he is. It's you you really feel your strength, your mental strength start to grow when you're in this spot. I want to see Okrov go to his knees, try to force it. It's gonna get up, but he's yeah, like, look at this. Interesting. Yeah. It's difficult to get that ankle up though. Yeah. All the, the He's got the heel the weight on it. Though. So you got it lifted. If you're Coriel, you might want to just extract it. You can even drop that. No, he goes the other direction and squashes down on it. The I like this balance kid. Is, is, is really, really good. Yeah. It's his awareness and his understanding of his own body. He's a great young fighter, this guy. Okay. And he's willing to try to win a fight the hard way. This is the hard way. 14 minutes of brutally hard work. Think of all the confidence he takes from this fight. Oh, yeah. Still a minute left, but man, uh, it is trending his oh, way. Yeah, six, six shots coming in. Operative is eating some large overhands. He's going to look for the head and arm choke here, or at least the threat of it. No punches instead. He's got a mean streak to him, too. Looks like the nose of Okarov has been bloodied a little bit. But if there was any doubt who's going to win this round with 30 seconds to go, that's been put to bed now. I want to see more urgency in Okarov, but I don't think he's going to try and get up, get to his knees. A lot of people are afraid to give their back. Yeah. Good strikes, man, by Kirill. A lot of power. Yeah, and, and this showing. late in, in a fight, he's just got so much zip left. Look at this, just to put a stamp on it. He he might, work. He's trying to finish it. Oh, Rose, he's going to come close. Oh, Rose. really good, powerful shot got through there. Ooh, it took until the last 10 seconds to try and finish it, Correo, but overall in the scope of the fight, he had the momentum and he really made it count in the third and final round. Yeah. Who wrestles the Sambo champion? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, Stefan was looking at Okarov and saying, man, I don't want to fight that dude. Now I'm looking at both of them, yep. <laughs> but more so Correal. That's the last guy you want to be fighting when he's coming on that hard in minute 15. Well, Kirill made a real statement, you know, saying that before the fight, but then, you know, making it come through in the fight. And there we can see the, the foot jam technique, yeah. the gray area we're talking about. Unfortunately, it didn't help Kirill, uh, it didn't help Okarov even win that round, but it was a, a clever little move and something fascinating to see. And here we get the huge shots from Kirill at the end, Ugh. where he just really motored away and, from what we can tell, probably took this fight. Wax Harvest to the center of the ring, please. Well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, your applause for both fighters. Oh, yeah, me. Oh, you know, I Well, the winner of this fight is the man in the red corner, Dachi We'll hear from Coriel in a very short amount of time. An excellent performance from him. I'm here with your winner, Dacia Coriel. That's a tough, tough opponent to face. And you just were more aggressive and more aggressive and better as the fight went on. You gotta be proud of this one, man. Luis, thank you. First of all, thank my team coach, Orlando coach, Greg, vegan, my little brother, 
the, the, the whole team, the boys, my family, and the organization. Who's that, that's the kind of fight that makes you a better fighter. And you are a scary dude tonight. Congratulations on a great Thank win, you. man. Dice Correa. An excellent fight. Make sure that you follow LFL on social media channels, lflmma.com. You can find everything there. Levels Fight League on Facebook. You can see the addresses on the bottom. Make sure you follow us so you can stay up to date and catch all those highlights because there was some funky, excellent, interesting things in that fight that we'll watch a few of them right now. Very skilled guy, obviously, but also it got an ornery streak to him as the fight went on. You know, there were chances to try to get the head and arm choke or go to the back. He just wanted to pound away, wanted to take something beautiful and make it ugly. Vicious, gorgeous, wonderful violence. You all out of bricks, man. Yeah. You heard your hand, like, yeah, patting him. Like, I know. Yeah, he's steel. Yep. It's a monster. But we've got nine more fights, so let's introduce awesome. the next one. Round well, the next LFL fight is catch weight 54 kilograms. Fighting out of the blue corner representing Brazil, Gracie Maia! Gracie Maia, a 25-year-old Brazilian with another fantastic kickboxing background. Uh, yeah, she's just uh, one of these tough, tough Brazilians that they just seem to just endlessly produce in that country. Yeah, you, you'd expect something completely different with a Brazilian with the last name Maya. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's a, she's a terrific The kickboxer. first name Gracie oh, and the man. last name Maya. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the opposite of nominative determinism, I guess. Gracie Maia, no, I've got to be a kickboxer. Yeah. The, uh, you know, of course we know that in Brazil, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is, is a big sport, but so is Muay Thai. Like, there's a real love for Muay Thai uh -huh. in Brazil, and, and the Brazilians express it in a slightly different way than the Dutch do. But interesting as well, I mean, showing that when I watched some of Maya's last fight, like I watched one with uh, Sabrina Santiago, She's not afraid to clinch and grind, similar to what we saw in uh, the previous fight. So even though she's a kickboxing background, she's an MMA athlete. She is going to go out there and try and win whatever means possible. Well, and her opponent fighting out of the red corner from the Netherlands, Benita Valroy! Van Roy comes from some pretty good pedigree. She trains with uh, UFC fighter Jerame de Ramini. You, uh, you ever trained with her, Stefan? I haven't trained with her, but I've heard about her. If uh, her opponent is a kickboxer tonight, and Benita Van Roy trains with one of the best hey, kickboxers, yeah. female kickboxers of all time, Jermaine, Jermaine de Randami, then uh, we're in for a treat. But yeah. yeah, I've heard some really high praise about Benita Van Roy, very talented. Just starting in her pro career, but really looking forward to, to seeing her fight tonight. And a little interesting tidbit as well on, on that note, she, all her finishes have come on the ground. Yeah, look at that. So one would expect maybe Van Roy is going to look to that to, for her path to victory tonight, especially because there is a little bit of a weight differential between here. This is a catch weight fight at uh, 54 kilograms. Maya is moving up while Van Roy is moving down a little bit. Yeah, so there could be a, a size and strength advantage here by the time they both replenish. She's also, uh, you know, in addition to martial arts, she's a swimmer. And the swimmer's body is really, really different, smooth and, and fluid often. And, uh, you know, cardiovascular capacity is often really high. So it's interesting to see how she moves here. Whatever it is, it's another fascinating matchup Donovan mm. put on for us today. Van Roy as well, uh, maybe not an LFL veteran, but had her first ever pro fight on LFL 5. Uh, rear naked choke in round two against Kelly Hamming. So we know she's got that in her locker. Well, I'm introducing first the young lady fighting out of the blue corner from Brazil. 25 years old, stands in at five feet, three inches, 159 centimeters, with three professional fights on her record, two victories and one defeat. She's representing Forta Combat Team. Ladies and gentlemen, Gracie Maia! <laughs> when her opponent 
in the red corner. 25 years old, stands in at 5 feet, 6 inches, 168 centimeters. One fight, one victory, representing Van Buel Sports, Benita Varoy! see here fighters same age but there is a big reach advantage for Van Roy. Where well, this LFL fight is scheduled three rounds of five minutes. Referee is Mr. Philip van Heusden. You know the rules, fight hard, fight clean. When I say stop, you stop. Touch gloves if you want to, go back to your corner. You do see a size advantage. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. See our uh, second fight of LFL 11, Maya versus Van Roy. Van Roy in the red corner, in the orange, and Maya in the full gray. Maya lets her come to her. Oh man, <laughs> they are not yeah. waiting around out here. Oof. Oh, good left hook there. Overhand right landed, but she just kind of watched it come back and got dinged with the left hook. And you can see Van Roy is clammed up a little bit behind the gloves after eating that. Good leg kick to start with, though, by Van Roy, the first one. And then Maya ends with a really good left hook. Yeah, good looking fight. Another nice leg kick, Stefan. Yeah, powerful. She's oh! Yeah, her straight right is looked like her, her tightest weapon for Benita. The left hook for Maya. Both well, women have a lot of power, man. Oh, good block. Yeah, it hurts. It's how you uh, make your opponent stop throwing those leg kicks. One good block mm. can be the end of that. And both fighters aggressive here. Good combinations by Maya so far. Yeah, Maya's seeing everything. And she's not afraid to let you throw a little bit if she's going to land the last one. She's keeping the distance. Smart decision because... Oh, man! She ben throws bombs! Yeah, she does. Maya wants to throw when you throw. She is trying to interrupt your throws. And it's succeeded a few times. And Van Roy is backing away a little bit and letting Ooh. Maya head forward. That kind of power will shut you down. Mm -hmm. And it's because she's relaxed. Oh, nice. Oh, that's Van Roy coming forward again. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, nice right right hand. beautiful right. Oh, the ladies are bringing it, man. Yeah. This is Ooh. an excellent fight. We're not even halfway through the first round. Oh. Oh. Power. And our first clinch of the fight so far. We've seen Maya have success here in her previous fights, but the size advantage of Van Roy is sure to play a little bit of... Uh, there. Oh, good yeah. Knee. Yeah. Now you really see the size advantage. Yes, you do. And she'll feel it, they'll both feel it here on that vertical playing surface. Clever work from Maya there, reversing that. Yeah, and she's got a good head position now, but um, I think she, she's going to want to break. They're, when you see them throwing at distance, they both look so different. Maya's relaxed and elastic, and Benita, with that you know, bigger, stronger swimmer's body, is kind of biting down a little bit, so she's actually not maybe hitting as hard as Maya is because she's more tense. And on that topic, Van Roy is trying to swim her arms out of that clinch, but she, she's looking for grips or yeah. something to get a hold of. I, it looks like she's gonna, looking for a throw. Yeah, a slide by of some kind. But Maya's doing a good job. Now, Benita can maybe drop down. There she is, bro. If Benita doesn't get a takedown out of this, she won't mind because you're bigger and you're stronger. You might just be fatiguing your opponent too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. She can pick that ankle now. now. Yeah. Like you said, she does seem to be hunting for that throw sometimes, Van Roy. Turning that right, left hip around. I think Maya is trying to create distance. She's trying to break, but Benita is doing a really good, nice elbow there. She's doing a really good job. There we go. 
This is what Maya wants. That was a really good minute for Benita, though, too. That was probably one of her best minutes, where she was able to use her size and change the sort of playing environment. Oh, man. Oh, what a beautiful combination. And it's opened up a big cut on Maya's right eye. Low kick to a left, high yes. kick, and then a beautiful jab after that. But now it's Maya pressing for This is an mm. amazing round. Oh, Maya has seen red in more senses than one. But Benita looking for the Maya. throw. Oh, man, what a round. Yeah, you're going to have to submit Maya or shut her off because I don't think she's going to stop. This is one of the best rounds I've ever seen at all the Alabama events so far, guys. That's a crazy round because they're both so committed to it. Oh, that's oh, nice. Oh, reverse on that's the takedown. Big. I've got some good shots here. The ref might... Oh. And she's got her arms oh. locked underneath her, and she's using her weight, so Maya cannot really use her arms. Good Ten ground seconds left. There. The referee's having a look, but blood is pouring off Maya. She yeah, that was survived, though. That left head kick to the right side. Oh, that's a big shot. This is what Benita wants to do in the, the second round. Put that weight on top of Maya. Use that bigger frame. Gentlemen, what a round we Great. just saw then. Fireworks from start to finish. Incredible. Yeah. Um, the heart of Maya, you, you could see that just come out whenever she had an opening. Even though she was getting beat up by a bigger, stronger woman, she found her moments. She won't fade. She's not going to fade. Well, after Van Roy threw that right, right low kick, left high kick, oh, yeah. Maya came back strong. She set up the right low kick a few times on its own and the left on its own, but then packaged them together. Ooh, she, her eyes opened up there on that one, see? A lot of times you hear people say, yeah, I don't really like watching women fight. They don't really have a lot of power. Go watch this fight. Yeah. Watch Th this fight. Those are dumb people, Stefan. <laughs> they could knock me out. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. That was the one. Oh, oh man. The big cut on yeah. Maya's head. Low kick to a head kick. Ooh. Look at that, beautiful, Just so smooth. And the glancing foot is what caused the cut. Boom, boom, and then the jab. There, yeah. boom, one, two, nice. My lord, we stuffed a lot of living into that first five minutes. Can we even possibly get anything of as much fireworks in this second round? We have Maya in the gray with blue tape around her gloves, Van Roy in the orange with the red tape, and they've started again. I like the way Benita's moving, coming forward, putting the pressure on Maya, but she needs to do more with it, because she's she's forcing her to do something, but then she just keeps on waiting. She needs to counter or, or drop down to uh, for a, a level change, in my opinion. Whenever Benita throws a third punch, that's ooh, that's when Gracie Maya uh, opens up on her. If she's if her feet are planted right there, as soon as her feet are planted, Maya starts firing away at her. Good jab there by Van Roy. Both a little bit more tentative <laughs> as I say that and they jab each other. I mean, by comparison, anything is more tentative than this round one. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was pretty crazy. Like, I can't imagine what that experience was like for them. Like a roll, an adrenaline filled roll. It comes some nice shots from oh, Van Roy, and she's power from both in the exchanges. Reversal there from Maya. She had a body lock, but good job by Benita to swim her arms back in. The, the, the one clean takedown around one was Benita Van Roy. Yep. And uh, she's looking for that again. Now. And of course, she felt good on top there. And so she, she got it. That she got the leg. Yeah. Beautiful single. Now she's going to the back. Oh, oh it locked choke, in. Yeah. She's got she finish there. there. It's a weird angle, but it can be done. And her arm is outside. She can use her right arm to get out of that. She's got oh, it. Oh, she's got her. They go out. Did, she met. She met. No, she's, she's still there. Still that. She doesn't have it locked in. She cannot put enough pressure on the neck. But this is not going to be a comfortable position oh. for Maya. But it looks she's, like Maya's going to end up on top. Yep. No, no. She uh, goes to the back. This. Oh, nice job by Van Roy. Oh, oh. Beautiful. So she came up to four Van Roy. points. Came up to four points and picked the knee out. And Full mound now. And Maya just used a lot of energy. Now she yeah. needs to fight the bigger Van Roy on top of her. It's going to be hard to get her off here. And Van Roy has half the round to work from here. This could be the beginning of the end for Maya. Look at how Van Roy is not giving her any space no. with her legs. Oh. Doing a really good job using that mouth. 
referee is asking to see more defense from Maya. She's going to attack the head and arm choke yeah. here. Oh, look at tricep. that. Yeah. Smooth. Put her ear on the tricep, and then she'll probably step off. She'll get a better angle if she does. You don't have to step off. This could be the end of yeah. the fight here. She's now, high with it. She's putting pressure on the neck more than. So her left hip is going to try to tuck in behind. Right now, it's more of a neck crank. She needs to. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. Van Roy comes out strong in the second round and finishes Maya with a, um, a head and arm choke. What a fight, though. Oh, what incredible. a fight. Incredible. A Just lot of heart in that Gracie May. Maya. High octane from start to finish. Both fighters, exactly, Robin, showing an incredible amount of grit and fierceness and technique and just everything we love. Emily. Great experience for Benny Irvin Roy in only her second pro fight. Yeah, when you're, when you, it's good fortune if you get people that are this tough and this gritty to fight and be able to come out on top. That experience that readies you for bigger, stronger, tougher tests to come. And you can see Maya's face there. There were some pretty big bumps blossoming over her visage. I, I got a feeling, and I hope we'll see Benita Van Roy back pretty soon mm -hmm. in the LFL cage. I want to see her progress so. here. And here's the finish, Robin. Can you walk us through it? So ear to tricep, your right shoulder chokes yourself. So Benita's right shoulder uh, cuts off one side of the neck, and Gracie Maya's own right shoulder cuts off the other side of the neck. And then when the blood can't get to the brain, the brain starves of oxygenated hemoglobin, and you either tap or you go to sleep. Work hardest to the center of the ring, please. Well, first of all, applause for both uh, athletes. Gracie Maria and Benita Barroi. And the winner of the three minutes and 11 seconds in the second round by arm triangle, the young lady in the red corner, Benita Barroi. I am here with your winner, Benita Van Roy. That was a tough, tough fight. It was really fun for us to watch. Really, really fun. What did it feel like to experience? Uh, I can't describe this feeling. Um, for me, it's the best feeling in the world, fighting and, you know, all that stuff. She, she was able to hit you hard in the first, you know, two, three, four minutes, and you were able to overcome and overcome. That, you now know about yourself, that you can overcome these things. Yeah, um, I have great coaches, so they learn me how to handle all that stuff. And my teammates, you know, they help me, so, yeah. Well, congratulations. Your winner, Benita Van Roy. Where do we go from there, Stefan? Oh, we got a really fun fight coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Something you know, yeah, you have a fantastic fighter on uh, this next yes, sir. bout. But Benita Van Roy, Gracie Meyer, just an absolute pair of warriors who left everything out there and showed an incredible amount of heart, perseverance, and skill. We're seeing the finish here. Although, oh, no, actually, that was a takedown before the finish. Look, look at the look on her eyes, just patience. Just gonna cut off the blood flow, and as long as it takes. I love this sweep, this little back door now where she goes up to four points and then picks the underneath leg. It's so sweet to see that. Probably the most important part of that is hooking the leg and then pulling that leg behind you so you, your opponent cannot use his her uh, hips to put the weight on top of you. She did it, she did it picture perfect. And you can yeah. see how much that meant to that memory there. I always find it interesting when you ask somebody who just had this crazy experience, what did it feel like? She doesn't have words for that. <laughs> you don't have the words. You don't have the words for it. It's something that has to be lived. That was an awesome fight. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the featherweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner from the Netherlands, Saad Tusha! Tuja is uh, a fantastic, a fantastic good fighter. He fought on LFL 5 against Cedric Manhoof. 
which is a uh, phenomenal kickboxer. Exactly, and actually managed to beat him. So Tujar is just beginning his his pro journey, really. He had a big amateur career, seven to two victories, and he's really been a submission hunter in his previous fights. You know, but he's just getting started. This is a 28-year-old who already has a lot of experience from uh, from Jim Royale. He's got a really good body lock, which he likes to take his opponents down with and then put the pressure on top of them until they give up position for a submission, and then he jumps all over them. That, that body lock is just such a nice way to get it to the ground because you have so much control when you get it there. Yeah, he's got very long arms if you look at him too. Like it's very easy to go around his opponent all the way and lock his hands and then bring him back and squeeze. It's just And that's just such a high percentage route. You get, first you get the grip, then you put the pressure and you're in control the whole time. But you're right, when you look at the length of, of his upper arm and his lower arm, that is a lot, that guy has a lot yeah. of reach. Is. And it's a rocky world as well. As well. So Tujar has lost his first pro fight, even though having a glitter, uh, glittering amateur career. And what does that do mentally, Robin? Losses are hard, but but at, in fighting, as in life, you know, to let's say you want to write a great song, you have got to write 600 bad songs first. That is the process to becoming better, and and losing is a process to becoming a winner. Not everybody loses, but the, a loss can be a very powerful learning tool. Out of the red corner from the Netherlands as well, uh, Sharif La Rossi. So you know so a, a little bit about Sharif La Rossi, don't you? Uh, yes, sir. I've known him since he was about 15 years old. He walked in with no skill, but he's getting better and better every single day. Because every single day, this is all he wants to do. He watches tape all day long. He comes to every single class. He's motivated. His wrestling has improved a ton. He's very good on the ground. His striking is very, very good. So really looking forward to seeing him progress again. And he's been a little bit of an LFL alumni, having uh, fought on LFL 6 and lost to Sav Koran, but then on LFL 8, where he won with a rear naked choke against Fake Van Ursel. So he's really building up the experience and becoming part of the LFL story. Yes, sir. So guys, I'll be right back. I'm yes. going to do a little bit of corner work. Don't say any bad words about me because I'm going to watch this back. <laughs> See you guys in a little we bit. We wouldn't do that on your birthday. OK, he's, he's gone. Now's the time to yes. mouth him, Robin. I would never say it to his face. It's far too big. Yeah. It is uh, Stefan Struve's birthday, for those of you watching. Uh, send, him, send him a happy birthday. Yeah. And so I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to have our commentator be able to step over there, step away. It lets the audience see how important that Stefan is to Dutch fighting and martial arts in the Netherlands. And, it, you know, it's, he stays attached. What better commentator can you get than somebody who's literally involved in the show tonight? And you'd have just seen him there on the camera, the skyscraper, as, yeah. he, as he was known in more ways than one. We're introducing first a man fighting out of the blue corner from the Netherlands. 28 years old, stands in at five feet, 10 inches, 180 centimeters. Tonight, his second pro fight, ladies and gentlemen, is representing Jim Royale. Sad Tuja! Here's the opponent in the red corner from the Netherlands as well. 22 years old, stands in at 5 feet 9 inches, 175 centimeters. Six professional fights on his record. Three victories, three defeats. He's representing the world famous Team Schreiber. The last nomad, Sharif Larossi. And of course, let's take a look at uh, how they measure up. A little bit of reach and height for Saad, but uh, Sharif younger and hungry. You can really see that 10 centimeter reach with uh, Tujar's long, long arms, which, mm -hmm. as Stefan's saying, look for the body lock in this fight. Look for him trying to use that as much as he can. Well, this LFL fight in the featherweight division is scheduled three rounds of five minutes. The referee is Mr. Niels Burske. Of course, with Stefan in uh, Sharif Larossi's uh, corner is okay, Bob gentlemen. Schreiber. And five minutes, sometimes you know the rules, make it a good we and use the fight. word legend Check a little heavy-handed, like. but Bob Schreiber Seven. is a legend of uh, Netherlands martial arts. Yeah, a, pr yeah. a, a pride fighter from back in the day. 
So here we are, the third fight of LFL 11. Are you ready? A featherweight fight. bout between two excellent young fighters, Tuja in the tight orange shorts and La Rossi in the open ones. And they started fast here, Robin. Sharif comes out right hand forward, so the body is open to the to the rear right weapon of uh, Tuja, which you're seeing him use. Right kicks are a good weapon for him in this stance. Both testing each other out a little bit here, Robin. Both probing. Yeah. Oh, my body cook, my kick. Pushed. Coach Struve mentioned uh, Sharif how badly he wants it, how driven he is. Sometimes that can make a guy not perform to his best. So much desire that you just hold the steering wheel too tight. But he seems really to be having a good flow so far. And extracts his leg and right back up. And he turns his man and ends up on top. A great choice. Nice work from La Rossi there. He's really got a good position here over you know, most of the round to go, and he's in the middle of the cage. It's gonna be hard for Tujar to get up, and La Rossi's got a lot of time to work, Robin. Watch Tujar's hips. So with his feet closed, you know he's not gonna stand up here. Watch Tujar, whether he puts his feet in the hips or rotates, yeah, he's trying to rotate for maybe an armbar. And Sharif just wants to chill here for a little bit, take control of the biceps or the shoulders, and then take the strikes as they as they materialize. You don't want to force it. No, especially when I have three minutes left in the round. And you're seeing him rotate his hips, um, Saad Trujar, you're seeing him rotate his hips, potentially to try to get an arm bar or a triangle, so you got to be aware of that, and Sharif is. And Sharif LaRossi is throwing some nasty, yeah. swinging, short little elbows down just to try and open up a cup. So, and there's a, a, an arm bar swivel again, but he's wise to it. So you watch Sharif's hands. He'll either take control of the shoulders or control of the biceps. And then once you do that, you open your man up and you have angles to be able to attack from the inside. And as you said, Robin, Tujar is constantly looking for this armbar. It's obviously something he likes, but ate a few punches there for the privilege. He's also kind of telling Sharif that you should be aware of these submissions, but that you don't need to worry about him standing up because he hasn't shown any desire to stand here and drop his feet to the floor and try to drive himself up. He's, he wants to attack the armbar. And once you know that, you can prepare for it. And having said that, this actually will make enough space for him to stand up, should he choose, yeah. Interesting that Rossi decided he wanted to get back to the feet. Which for Tuja, probably a good thing. He's got two minutes in the round to try and claw something back. Kicked out, out the uh, kickstand. And Sharif goes back to try to get another takedown. And he looks good so far. Yeah, yeah. he's got it. Lovely work. Very strong, muscular to strike there. Tujar is taking control of the right wrist because now instead of an armbar, he may try to throw his left hip up over and get a triangle attack here. But if I can see it, you know that Sharif can feel it. Referee just mentioning the toes on the cage here. Yeah, you can put your foot on the cage. You can't grip into the cage with the toes. <coughs> <laughs> it's a nice round for Sharif. He's had to work hard to get these takedowns, but when he gets them, he opens up the body on the inside line and then takes that little elbows over the top like that. And Tuja, another. And Tuja, those elbows that you were talking about, you can see them working. We're right next to Tuja here. There's armbar now. Oh, oh, he's got an armbar in there. He sits deep. He's got the elbow oh. past. <laughs> So once you strip the elbow past the cup, the armbar is not as dangerous anymore. But that goes to show you, you if you don't cross one T, you're going to be tapped. But when you do attack these submissions, one of the possible results is you get passed. And that's what has happened here. And the Rossi now has 30 odd seconds to work from side control. And you see these bucks from Tuijar. These are going to fatigue him more because the danger is higher. And he's got the bottom arm. See? See that arm? He's got that trapped. Not anymore. 
Good round for Sharif Larossi. Definitely, and you can see that the face of Tuja is just busted up a little bit, a little bit swollen, red, scratched. So it might not have looked from the TV that he was doing too much damage, but those repeated shots coming down, Robin, really do pay a big price. What you just saw there with the Stefan and uh, LaRossi, Stefan's only job was to get him to slow down a little. Breathe some sweet air into your lungs. Hold the air for a few seconds. Breathe it back out. Listen to Bob's voice. Like, it's super simple here. You know, when you got a guy who's really excitable, and I think Sharif is one of these guys because of his passion, primary job number one is just chill him out. And this Get is a beautiful reversal from LaRossi on mm. the takedown. And, and a kid like LaRossi actually often has gets better in the second round. Well, because second he's starting to feel the round. flow now. And but how does Tuja get back from this, Robin? Well, I think if you're his coach, as much as we, we feel, felt we were close to that arm bar, we're not going to attack off our back as much. We're going to stand back up and try to kick this kid in the head. Um, because that went well, okay, second round. but we lost the round. And if we Two more like that, we will lose the fight. So if and when you get taken down, you get right back up, you fight. The, the battle is to stand up, not to submit. And then you try to kick him in the head like he's doing right now. Keep it simple. Okay, this is our second of three rounds of five minutes. And as I said that, the other option is let's get on top. You know, Let, let's put Sharif on his back and see what happens if we're on top. Let's get a few elbows of our own into his face. And you can see, oh, a little bit off balance there from the from the kick, but ooh, another little uncertain step back from Tuja with the Rossi strike. Yep. And last time, LaRossi muscled his way into this position to a takedown. We'll see if he can do it again. Excellent work by uh, Tuija, but uh, LaRossi gets the head and, and uses it to take him to the ground. Now he's in top half. And this was exactly where Tuija didn't want to be. Yeah, you've already felt the minutes of elbows slicing your face and, and hammer fists knocking a little bit of sense out of a little bit of adding some little birds to the sounds and you, oh you and Tuja, Tuja has been opened up here sorry robin yeah the blood is pouring from it looks like a nose maybe maybe above the nose uh, we'll see we'll get a better look but yeah if you are the rossi you like all this if you're bob and stefan and we're happy with everything here and three and a half three and a half minutes <laughs> it's still left to go in this second round He's opened up Tuja, and he's in the position he wants to be. Oh, so it looks like it's on the cheekbone. And Tuja again grabbed and tried to rotate into an armbar. If he gets it, great, he'll win the fight. But if he does not complete it, it is not helping him win the minutes. It's an all or nothing proposition for his armbars. You can tell he likes that style of jiu-jitsu in the gym, that guard play, yeah. but it's not always going to work in MMA these days. Add a bit of blood to it, a bit of grease, you know. The sweat, things get slippier, harder to lock things in. And the Rossi is getting minutes, getting seconds, getting moments, right? Uh, and Saad has a win or a loss only as options with, when trying to get the armbar off his back. Uh, no matter win or lose here, Saad can go back and, and drill stand-up sequences like crazy. He's found one area of his of his game that he can improve and just drill stand-up sequences. And during those stand-up sequences, you can reverse and end up on top. But, but on the bottom here, it's a rough place to be. It's a hard, tough place. And as the work by amazing cameramen is showing, this is a claustrophobic world that doesn't seem like it's ever going to end, Robin. Yeah, and your, your own breathing starts to get harder. And Sharif will hear you wheezing and gasping, and it'll make him feel stronger. And the Rossi's ended up in north-south, but Tuja, oh. Oh, there's a oh. Yeah. This is like a Gar-style yeah. choke here. Yeah, he's got him. Uh, can stay with this. Yeah, you go. Oh, there it is. It's actually an anaconda. Uh, but the principle is the same. We block the blood flow to the brain. A very tough round for Tuja there. As soon as LaRossi got the takedown, he swarmed all over him, Robin, and finished with that choke at the end. 
You hear uh, somebody sobbing. It's actually the Rossi. Yeah, it's probably Joy. <laughs> and he said, I'm, so, I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard him say, I'm so sorry. You Just because you love fighting doesn't mean you love hurting people. It is, of course, a major part of it, but, but you don't necessarily love it. But, of course, the challenge is the overcoming someone, not hurting them. Yes. It's overcoming what's in front of you rather than necessarily wanting to hurt the other person. That is 100% true. Those two things go together often. Uh, what's going on here, Stefan? A uh, very proud coach over here. Yeah, I Very bet. good to see him. Man, perfect performance. Yeah. Like, and then he locked in the Dars. Is, is that a Dars beautiful. or an Anaconda? I can't see the angle. It's a Dars. It is a Dars. Yeah. yeah. He's really, really good with the Dars. And he found it sort of in a transition um, between positions. Yeah, but the way he um, tenderized him, man, let's just call it pretty much what he did. It's just, he had yeah. so much control. And he went up a weight class. It's so good to see him deliver like that with all the work he puts in. A really excellent performance. And one I'd like to speak to you a little bit more, but we uh, need to hear from the man, La Rossi himself. And Robin is on his way to, uh, to interview and announce the fight very shortly. Yeah. Referees trying to break up the, the kind words. There's a lot of respect here. Ladies and gentlemen, make applause for both fighters. They, uh, they have trained in the past a bunch of times. And the winner of this fight by Dars after three minutes and 15 seconds in the second round is the man in the red corner, Chief Larasi! There with your winner, Sharif Larasi. Uh, Sharif, after that fight was over, you seemed emotional. What were you saying to him? It was such a tough fight because Saad, I trained with him, I sparred with him, I do my strength and uh, conditioning trainings with him. It was, and most importantly, he's my brother in uh, uh, Islam. So I really saw him as a brother and it was a really hard fight to uh, prepare for, mentally especially. You don't have to necessarily want to hurt another man, but overcome the challenge. But in doing so, of course, you cut his face and hurt him. It is a complex thing we do in here. Yes, yeah, it's like, it's really hard to put all that stuff aside for 15 minutes, but it is the game. And I'm just, now I'm gonna go and pray with him. So that's my form of respect. Well, uh, that was a wonderful fight, and uh, he was a very tough opponent, and I'm glad you guys got to share that, and I'm glad we all got to watch it. Thank you. Thank you. Sharif Lorossi. Mama, I love you. Lovely, what a fight, and you must be an incredibly proud, proud coach, says Stefan. Yeah, not just on uh, his performance just now, but about the person he is. Yeah. He is. He's the, come the man over. of the moment. He's come over to hug Yes. He's, uh, he's the, the kind of kid you want to coach because he takes it all in. He, he never, never questions anything. And I, um, he always works hard, and um, he deserves this very, very much. So he caught that Dars as, uh, as Saad went to four points. Yep. And just during Saad's going to four points, which would be the beginning of him getting to his feet, yep. that's where he caught the Dars. But he does that a lot of times, especially after being on top for a while and punishing his opponent. Then when you get to your knees, you're like, oh, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Yeah. And then you're boom, not up. there's the Dars. I wonder who taught him that. <laughs> we may never know. We know. Happy birthday, Stefan. But and we, we draw those darts jokes a lot, so. So we'll be back very shortly, everyone. Make sure you follow our social channels, lflmma.com. You can check out everything linked together. We have a little bit, we have so many fantastic fights coming up, but we have a short intermission. So make yourself a cup of tea, go on social media, follow us there. And well, while you're at it, why don't you also go on Ticketmaster and get the Get yourself a pre-ticket for LFL 12 on April 21st. There we we'll go. be seeing everyone very shortly.
Ik ben Benita van Roy. Ik uh, vecht een catchweight op 54 kilo en ik kom uit voor uh, Van Buur Sport in Os. Ja, ik ben eigenlijk niet net zoals iedereen. Um, ik ben niet al heel jong begonnen. Op een gegeven moment ben ik begonnen met kickboksen bij ons in het dorp. Maar het was het net, net niet. Ik heb een eerste les MMA gedraaid en ja, ik was gelijk verkocht. Met echt mijn passie, ook mijn sessie denk ik. Um, ik ga echt al in. Alles moet hier echt voor wijken. Echt alles. De eerste keer bij LFL. Het was mijn eerste MMA partij. Ik weet nog goed dat ik die kooi daarin stapte. En ik was daar echt alleen en ik liep daar rond en ik dacht echt wauw. Ja, dit is echt wat ik wil. Ik kwam wel in een uh, positie terecht, armbar. Ja, en toen dacht ik wel bij mezelf, ja, je breekt maar arm hier maar. Maar dan tap ik niet, dan vecht ik wel met eentje verder. En toen kwam ik op haar rug en toen, uh, ja, toen werd ik wel, dacht ik echt, nou laat ik echt niet meer los. Ja, toen had ik gewonnen. Super blij. Voor mezelf denk ik wel heb geleerd dat je niet nooit zomaar moet opgeven, dus niet opgeven. Dus, uh, naar het hoogst haalbare uh, gaan en natuurlijk UFC. En nu lach ik, maar ik ben wel heel dedicated. De kooi instap, dan ben ik gewoon echt een andere persoon en ik ga echt al in. I'm uh, Nika Chichnashvili. I fight at middleweight, 84 kilograms, from uh, Team Diager, Den Haag. My pro debut was one and a half years ago. It was 2 October 2022 against Mo Tini. That was my first fight. And then the fight starts and I, uh, I try to throw a high kick, but he catches me in the middle of a high kick and I, with, a, with a left hook. And I break my jaw and I fall down because I'm out of balance. I hop right back up and he's on to me and I, my, I feel my jaw hanging, I feel it's broken and I tried to knock him out in the first round because I thought if I have to fight uh, the whole fight with a broken jaw I'm gonna have a problem. A very tough guy, didn't work out. <laughs> but the reason why I didn't stop because I don't know, I was not raised to stop, doesn't matter. I don't remember what happened after the fight. It wasn't, it wasn't until I was outside of the arena that I started gaining consciousness back. First thing I asked my dad was, uh, did I, did I fuck up? And he said no. He said you lost, but but you didn't fuck up. And I asked him, uh, did I fight like a man still? A couple months later, he said that moved him because the most important thing for him raising me was for me to become a man eventually. That the only fight that I go to a decision is with a broken jaw made me realize that there's nothing really that where, where I'm not dangerous. My next opponent, Kiler Massis. I try not to underestimate him and I try not to overestimate him. I'm pretty sure I'll get the finish again. They can expect to get what they pay for. Uh, that's all I have to say. I love you for the levels. Finally, this is going to be a good one. Awesome, awesome, awesome fight. We have a winner. And we are back at Level Fight League's number 11. We can see there Roland Goodhart warming up for a beautiful shadow boxing. And he is coming, not the next fight, but the one after. He's looking confident and calm and probably just can't wait to get out there, right, Stefan? Such a big middleweight. He is powerful. Submission win his last fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the next LFL fight is in the middleweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner, representing Brazil, Guilherme Assis! Assis, Brazilian fighter, he last fought on LFL 10. I don't know if you uh, gentlemen remember that, the Noah Blyden fight. Ended very quickly, probably too quickly for um, Assis to really be comfortable. It's one of those fights that he came forward aggressively and just got caught and taken down very fast. So this for him is probably an opportunity to come back and try and right some of those wrongs. Yeah, and, and that is 
those are the outcomes and the consequences you're hoping for, but the path to that is not thinking about that fight, not thinking about the results, and only being present in the process. Having, going through the process of being sharp, being, ha starting the fight the way you want to fight it, this is a process-driven sport, like most things in life. If you concentrate in the moments and you're, you're focused and you're present, that's how you're going to do best. And it sees as a strong fight. It's BJJ purple belt, but with a Muay Thai background. And, you know, one thing for certain is he's going to come out aggressive. He's going to come forward. He's not going to want to take a step backwards. And for lots of those fighters, it can be tough to deal with that sort of forward pressure. There's there's something in, in the Brazilian fighters that often you, you see a guy just like Guillermo uh, who is driven by passion and driven by, you know, love of it and takes this approach that I will fight you wherever it goes. We go to the ground, I'll submit you, and we stand up, I'll knock you out. It's a very Brazilian, you know, passion-driven style of approaching fights. You fight many Brazilians in your time, Stefan? Yes, sir, I fought a bunch of them. Never an easy fight, though. No. It's gonna be interesting to see, because I, I, I really feel that Chicken Ashfield is going to be looking for the takedowns. Fighting out of the red corner, representing the Netherlands. Nika Chicken So for those who hung around, you should have seen some video background of an interview of Nika Chicken 22 years old. Like, it's always yeah. blows my mind when you have these levels, as the name of the promotion goes, with these fighters who just seem to be so confident and skilled and powerful and dangerous and they're 22 yeah so we saw that he lost on lfl6 to mohammedini which he broke his jaw immediately and still went to a decision but he righted that in his mind as you heard wrong at lfl10 when he got an arm triangle against patrick Molka. really i think one of the real joys of working on lfl and getting to this many events is we're seeing fighters like Chiki Nashvili rise up and we're watching them grow and mature as fighters and people in real time, and that's a real blessing. I always forget he's 22, even just when you talk to him or when you see him around, the way he carries himself. Like, he's not a kid. Like, there's a man. This is, this is a man. And I'm always a sucker for when people you know, go for slightly unorthodox music choice. Uh, this time it seems like it should be in a, you know, a Scorsese movie before there's yeah. a gangland execution. and. Love it. Stefan, what song did you come up to in your last few? Um, Do you even some, remember? Some Dutch trans yeah. music. Yeah. Yep. And why did you choose that? Because it gave you the right type of emotional you know, arousal that you were looking for? Or yeah, the, like the I, I, wanna, I, wa I wanted the atmosphere up. I wanted yeah. energy in the arena. Yeah. And what better way to do that with, with a Dutch DJ? <laughs> right? And, uh, and um, Nika wants the opposite he wants it he wants it dark and yeah. heavy and calm and if you're you know all of these things can be selected intentionally if sometimes you're too overly aroused early in a fight uh -huh. you come out to something like this get you centered and some people like start too slow so they come out to something energetic coming out with the georgian flag this weekend is a pretty good thing it's a pretty good weekend for georgia and i got a feeling it may get even better after this fight. Are you alluding to soccer and football? Nope, no, nope. I'm alluding to Ilya Tapuria yeah, and Merab Davashvili. <laughs> yes. And Nika Chukinashvili is looking to make another statement for the Georgians tonight. Well, the man fighting out of the blue corner from Brazil, 29 years old, stands in at six feet, one inch, 185 centimeters. Four professional fights on his record. He's representing Garage Team BJJ. Here's opponent in the red corner from the Netherlands, 22 years old, stands in at 6 feet, 182 centimeters. Two professional fights on his record, one victory, one defeat. Representing Team De Jager, Nika Chikindafili! So straight up stats wise, 
These fellas are actually the closest we've had so far with only a minor difference in height and reach, but where there is a real difference we can see here is body composition. Yes, I was literally going to use those words. Uh, how your weight is distributed is what creates your, your, your engine, and Chikinishvili, you can see, has a pretty strong engine. Well, wow, this LFL fight in the middleweight division is scheduled for three rounds of five minutes. The referee is Mr. Daniel Sharifi. But, gentlemen, you know the rules. Fight hard, fight clearly. Say to my comments all the time. No questions. Touch gloves if you want. Step back. But we've heard it said many times that this isn't a, you know, a body competition. Um, but your body is a reflection of the work that you did. Often. So here we go, fight number four on LFL 11. Short little slip there at the beginning for Chiki Nashvili. But we can see three rounds of five minutes, Chiki Nashvili in the full orange shorts. Oh, oh it's over already. What a knockout. That's a good stoppage. He was done. Oh, wow, blink and you'll miss it. What Heart a knockout. Heartbreaking for a cease. Two fights, two finishes, very fast. But Chiki Nashvili got the job done fast. Yeah, he just created a corridor for applied violence and just uh, drove those knuckles straight down the hallway. You'll see how straight those punches were. If you're scheduled to fight a Georgian this weekend, yeah, good luck. Go, to you. Just go do something different. Yes. Just take up golf, maybe. Yep. Nobody's going to try to knock you out in front of your family in golf, so it is going to be a, a, a safer assignment. Let's look at the straight. I think it's a straight left. There's a right there. That, oh, that left as he's stepping through stance. Watch. One. Steps two. through stance. Oh. Straight left. Touch. Touch. That one. Yep. Yep. It was already already rocked by the right hand, but then yeah. the left hand wasn't even as hard. But but he's stepping on it, right? Yep. Uh, that that's very very modern MMA striking when you're stepping through stance to throw punches. Really good stoppage by Daniel Shuri. Yes, very good. Yeah, huge respect to the referee. That was the fight was over, and all the cease was going to do at that point was eat some more damage. He came up looking like he didn't know where he was. To center of the ring, please. Well, of course, your applause for both fighters, Guillermo Asis and uh, Nika Chikinafili. Well, the winner, ladies and gentlemen, after uh, 20 seconds in the first round by technical knockout, man in the red corner, Nika Chikinafili! And we'll hear from Chikinashvili very shortly. I'm here with Nika Chikinashvili. Is this surreal? Like a minute ago they started this fight and now it is over and you're standing here. I don't know what to say. I, it's too little time to think. Yeah, that, that's what I'm getting at. It's literally they said your name and then before you knew it, a right hand landing stepping through with the left and he's down. This is, uh, this is not a game, this is not a sport, this is fighting. Yeah, and respect to anyone who comes in. But when you come in here with me, you need to prepare for something else. So. Yeah, we shall not, shall not forget that this is a dangerous, dangerous game and it is very real. Um, we will see you here in LFL again, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yes. Congratulations on a quick knockout. Nika Chichinichvili. A huge prospect, 22 years old, Stefan. You can almost smell the confidence on him. Yeah, a man of few words, but he chooses his words wisely, and they they hit they hit the spot. And really good prospect, very powerful, very strong athlete. And it will be intriguing to see what's next for Cheeky Nashvili. What could be intriguing is the winner of our next fight, another middleweight bout with uh, David Connolly and another LFL talent, Roland Hoodhart. Could be a very intriguing matchup, but here is the finish again. Well, efficient. Look at the left, right? That one. So when it's that straight and your hip is into it, to, to the naked eye, it might not look as heavy of a shot as it is, but when it comes straight down the pipe and your left hip is going straight in, you just, you just project a lot of energy. A yeah, really good stoppage. Again, when your when your hat hits the mat like yeah. that, you get yeah. concussed again. Yeah, Not by a punch by by the mat. 
So well, the next fight, ladies and gentlemen, is also in the middleweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner representing the United Kingdom, David Connolly! David Connolly, UK-based fighter. You know, watch a lot of his video, very aggressive. He's a BJJ Perto belt with a Muay Thai background, but in most of his fights, he comes out strong and fast. So he's had a fight against uh, Rhino Daly, another UK-based fighter, where he was just uh, takedown hunting, takedown hunting. And he used a similar approach against uh, Igor Persicasis. Same approach, coming out, looking for the takedown, looking for the clinch, just putting real bodily pressure. So this is going to be a huge test for Roland Hoopas. Yes, it definitely is. This guy has a, a good swagger to him, too. Some people just, you know, there are martial artists, and then there are people who have a nerdy approach to it. Then there are fighters. Some people are fighters. This guy's a fighter. Uh -huh. you know? And he's going to need that aggression against a, a much bigger heart. So he needs to hunt him down, put the pressure on him, tie him out, hunt for the finish. Yeah, Gallagher has had, this will be his, uh, Connolly, sorry, this will be his fifth pro fight, while Hoodhart is just starting his career, and this will be his second. So it'll be intriguing about whether the extra experience, the extra time in his ring, almost double the amount of time in pro fights will pay off yeah. for Connolly. Yeah, that this is, you know, Roland isn't young, right? So he has to take the tough ones now. And if he's going to do what he wants to accomplish in this game in the next three, four, five years, you've got to take tougher tests earlier than other people. And this is a tough one. But you look, Connolly is not bothered exactly like you were saying, Robin. He's relaxed. He looks loose. He looks just ready to throw down right now. Well, now his opponent fighting out of the red corner from the Netherlands. Roland Goudha! As we mentioned, this is Goudha's second pro fight, but this is one of the fighters that's risen from yeah. the LFL system from our new talent fight, which you can find more about if you follow us on social media, LFL MMA and so on and so forth. But he had... Um, Plenty of amateur fights, came up through the card, had his first pro fight on LFL 10, where he won with a, if you don't remember, a sneaky Kimura yes. from the bottom against Villar Andre Tangstad. But he's still growing as a competitor, and you can hear the local support for him here. Yeah, you know, I said he's not young. He's not old either. He, he's right in that pocket where right now is when he should be fighting pro. And uh, he's got something, you can tell. But a guy like this wants to accomplish great things. And uh, the way to do that is take tough tests early. And this is a tough test, Stefan. Yeah, 100%. He's, he's much bigger than Connolly. And he's going to have to use that. Yeah. You, he's, uh, he's a beast of a middleweight, this man. And we, we just discussed it, homegrown. I really like yeah. that. Um, I saw a lot of talent again today with the new talent series, and he's the example of what can happen. You can go into the pro scene, and you can have a, a really good start of your career over here at LFL. One, one of the things uh, that pro fighters do sometimes is they use weight cutting as a, as a weapon. And he's one of these guys. When you talk about how big he is, yeah. it's because he can comfortably and healthily strip himself down for weigh-ins and then replenish his body to be bigger on fight night. And he's a big dude, yeah. Big, athletic, skillful dude. Yeah, it'll be interesting. So what, one of the ways Hoodhart fights traditionally has been decision wins, kind of pointing out, striking some of the difference with his last pro fight being a finish. So it'll be very intriguing to see whether he's adding these more elements to his game as he grows as a fighter, grows as a competitor, grows as an athlete, or if he looks at finishes or is going to continue this smart, distance-based fighting. You know, when... I've said it all now twice already. Uh, you just know this guy wants to do big things. You know it. You're, he's handsome, skillful, popular. He's got all of those tools. Among the things you uh, eventually want to accomplish is to be super exciting, too. Not at the risk of losing, because you took too many risks, but enough so, so that you light up rooms, too. And you can hear the crowd reaction there for a local boy, Roland Hoodhart. Well, the man fighting out of the blue corner from the United Kingdom. 37 years old, stands in at 6 feet, 181 centimeters. Four professional fights on his record, two victories, two defeats. 
Representing the engine room, ladies and gentlemen, David Connolly! His opponent in the red corner from the Netherlands, 33 years old, stands in at uh, 6 feet 3 inches, 192 centimeters. One professional fight on his record, one victory, representing the fight IQ, no, no time! Roland Kuta! So we can see coming up on the tail of the tape very quickly here. Yeah, Kudha has a 10 centimeter ish height advantage, but yeah, a big, big reach advantage there of uh, 15 odd centimeters, which you expect him to use. Well, this LFL fight in the middleweight division is scheduled three rounds of five minutes. Referee is Mr. Philippe van Heusden. Fighters, Ronald. You know the rules, fight hard, fight clean. Touch gloves if you want to, go back to your corner. If you're Roland, you know that Connolly is gonna have to move towards you because you've got 15 inches of reach on him, so you might want to run him into your fight rear right. hand or an fight. uppercut or a knee if you can. And if you're Connelly, or Connolly, I'm sorry, uh, you just want to get that overhand right to him. Great weapon against a taller fighter. Oh, so oh big shot. Oh, 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 this could be oh, oh, Connolly. Oh. He's got a hold of, of Goudard's legs. Now he's underneath him. Not a good situation to be in if you're David Earth. Connolly. Yeah, early. No, he was shocked by Hoodhart's power there, but he's going to have to like a punishment here. He Big referee's shot by Hoodhart. He's rocked. He needs to stop himself. Referee will stop this stop, otherwise. Stop. That's it. Yeah. Hoodhart makes short work of Connolly. What a performance in his second ever pro fight for the hometown boy. And you can hear the crowd going wild. Connolly's split open, and he was just shocked by Goodhart's power. And Goodhart was really picking the shots to the two sides very, very well there. I want to see that opening volley that he threw, you know, just stayed very, very focused. And just touch, 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 touch until he wobbled. Nelly. Got two fights, blink and you'll miss it, finishes. <laughs> what a card this has been. Yeah, if we take a look at... Uh, we, we will see the replays and how Goodhart gets to Connolly with uh, with the hands in the open space. That's that's the beginning. Look, touch, touch, oh, uppercuts. And then forces Connolly to jump to, to attack the legs. Ends up on top. Look, he's picking ears. Ear, ear, ear. And the odd one glances in an inappropriate spot, but your job is to be targeting the ears, right? Or the area around the ears. And he's doing a great job of it right great now. Great precision there by Hoodhart, man. And you're showing the referee as well. He's not defending himself. He's taking these hits. Do That's something, it. stop it. He was trying to stay in the fight, trying to get a ah. hold of something, but being underneath, Hoodhart, man. Oh. Uppercut hooks, just perfectly touched. And then overwhelms him. I mean, uh, what a dream second fight for, second pro fight for Roland Hoodhart. The question is now, which is exciting, is where does he go next? Chika Nashvili against Hoodhart could be the one to make, Donovan, if you're listening. Yeah, I really like that fight. Two very interesting prospects at middleweight and both homegrown for uh, LFL. Yeah, exactly, which is what you want to see. That yep. nasty cut on Connolly's face there. Please. We should be getting the announcement. Well, first of all, first of all, ladies and gentlemen in Amsterdam, a big, a big applause for these two athletes, David Connolly and Roland Fruta. And the winner of this fight by technical knockout in the. 37 seconds in the first round is the man in the red corner, Roland Kuta! Uh, 
I'm here with your winner, Roland Goodhart. Congratulations, sir. So you're popular, handsome. You, you, you are uh, skillful. And if you're going to accomplish big things, you then need to have some big performances. And now you got that, too. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I had a really, really tough week, really emotional week. We heavy weight cut. Uh, the whole morning, I shit my pants. I was really nervous. Actually, I want, I want to cancel the fight. I'm, re I'm really honest. But yeah, that's what my, my life slogan is, face your fear. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of your fear, there's your treasure. So go, keep going, and chase your dreams. And I will come in this division. Yes, sir. And, and you, you're right. Everything you're feeling now and the story you just wrote about your life, this was, uh, it was shaped the day before yesterday and the day before that, and, and facing the fears, correct? Yeah, 100%, and also uh, my best friend, and one of my best friends from England, he uh, texted me three days ago that he uh, dreamed about the fight, and then I won the fight, so it was already written in the stars. That's what we believe, so uh, yeah, I'm an amazing man. Thank you. Congratulations. Roland Goodhart, ladies and gentlemen. Roland Goodhart, local boy, local hero, uh, rising Dutch MMA fighter who has come through the ranks at LFL and seems to have an incredibly high ceiling. God, there's so many excellent fighters in this country, Stefan. Yeah, no, uh, for sure. And we have the perfect stage for them to showcase their skill now in Amsterdam. So, loving this. And it's really what happens next. There are so many excellent fights. You know, we have a middleweight bout coming up later. Fight number eight, Kavelsdi versus uh, Van der Merkt, which there could be a title on the line. Where but before we get there, we let's so have great. a little look so, at uh, Brunswijk yeah, versus yeah, Culper, which is I'm gonna be our uh, uh, seventh yeah. fight of the evening, the light heavyweight bout. You can see the, the footage for them at the weigh-ins yesterday. So we're gonna have a little break coming up now. Make sure in that time you go on LFLMMA.com, you find our social channels, you follow us to make sure you stay up to date on all the fights, the news, what's happening, catch up with the highlights. And beyond that, you can also get the link to Ticketmaster to the, the event for LFL 12, which is happening on a, uh, April 21st. And if you get it now, you can get some nice early bird prices. Until then, we'll see everyone very, very shortly for some more fantastic fights from LFL 11. My name is Łukasz Kulpa, I live in Poland. Back in the days when there was no club in the Słupsk, we meet each other with the friends. We go, for example, like the park or we go to the basement. We have some like old sofas. It was wrestling and grappling on the old sofas and hitting each other with the small MMA gloves. Why I love this sport? Because you can always push yourself to the limit. When you go to the gym and you think only about the fighting, about the, about the technique, about the drills, it's just the way of life, you know, the way of warrior, the way I live. I feel very confident, especially when my guy is a striker. The preparation was really rough. I think that was the roughest three months of my life, if we're talking about the training, because I train like, I wake up at six, go for the training at eight, coming back home, eating, laying on the bed, and then going for the next, for the next training at four. So that was back in Thailand. There is always pressure, but I can like, just, you know, squeeze it. And that's all right. I didn't like my last fight, to be honest. I've, with my mind, I've been somewhere else. Now I work more on my focus and my concentration. Now when I'm focused, I'm a, like really dangerous and really strong guy. There's no chance for Clyde to win. I'm gonna keep that pace and that focus in the fight. He's fucked. February 18 gonna be 2-0 for me. Down, so what, this is my 
I think my mental is the best. If you don't knock me out, you're never gonna win against me. I'm like a dog. I always keep on going, 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 going. You know, it's you knock me out or I win. Representing Combat Brothers, top boy, Helen, come the best. Who's the best, me or him? I like to give it my all to prove that I'm better than anyone uh, in front of me. And that's why I train so hard for to, to prove myself and the others that I can beat everyone on a good day. My name is Shah Kamali, I'm from London and I'm fighting out of Fight Zone in uh, Bethnal Green, East London. This is all I do. I've got um, big ambitions in this sport, so I'm going to you know, dedicate myself completely to it. And you see it on fight night, how I perform, so you, you can see how much it means. He's a big guy, you know, he's, he's tall, but you know, he could be 10 foot tall, but you know, I'll still chop him down to size, you know what I mean? So I don't really look into his strengths and weaknesses too much. I just focus on what I need to do. We have a game plan that we're working on with my coaches, you know, Stuart and Rowan. I don't take this lightly, so and I, and I don't take my opponent lightly. But I'm very confident in the in the in the preparation that we're doing. So anywhere he wants to take the fight, I'm comfortable. Anywhere I want to take the fight, I'm comfortable as well. So it's going to be on my terms. He's going to have to be prepared for that. I'm doing mental reps. You know, I'm always visualizing the fight, everything. When I had that fight. Uh, Bangladeshi media caught on. You know, it's got like a couple million views over there on Facebook and uh, YouTube. I've got so much uh, support and so many messages from people in Bangladesh saying um, that I'm inspirational and um, they want to get involved in the sport because of me. I can continue to make them proud. Listen, let's give the fans a good fight, yeah? We're going to come out, touch gloves, and we're going to bang it out, yeah? So I'm fighting Ahmed again. We fought each other in uh, UAE Warriors. This fight I lost. It's important for me to avenge him, avenge the loss, and, uh, and, and fight for this belt, you know, to, to get to the next steps. I think I didn't uh, use enough gas. I didn't put enough fire into the fight. Um, we were both a little bit hesitant to really uh, get that clash. And um, I think it was a kind of a boring fight, even though we're both athletes who can bring fire to a fight. I'm sure I'm gonna bring that this time. I think a lot changed since our last fight, which was like two years ago, third MMA fight of, of mine. And I think I was really still struggling incorporating the mixed uh, style of, uh, of fighting. Now after these years of drilling and you know incorporating the ground style and the wrestling stuff in, into my game and also advancing my striking game for MMA, I think I, I changed a lot. Yes, I'm really prepared for the fight and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna change the outcome this time. There's a lot of challenges in, in this fight, you know, like every fight, of course, but just to name a few, it's, it's in my hometown, which brings pressure. It's for the title, which brings pressure. It's a new uh, weight class to fight in. It's against an opponent uh, who I have a loss on on my record, uh, who's already also grown a lot. It's very important now uh, because of the future opportunities that will bring. A loss would be very, very painful, you know, for my career and for the next steps. So there's a lot of heavy load to this fight and um, yeah but that pushes me a lot. There are a lot of nerves. This is good. It pushes me to train more, train harder and to, uh, to shift my mindset into positive. It means a lot for me to fight for the title now in LFL. Growing organization, it's uh, really name, making a name for itself and of course the opponent is a really good opponent to test my skills against. So I think it's a really nice moment to do this for the belt in Amsterdam and just uh, make a show out of it. Yeah, I think I got a lot to prove in the contenders again, you know, so this is my focus. So before entering the UFC, first of course, of course, prove myself here. So step by step. I want 
him to bring the fire because I'll bring the fire and I hope for a big clash. Yeah, I'm gonna bring the belt. I'm gonna keep it home in Amsterdam. Don't check in your baggage, you don't need it. <laughs>
some of the hardest people to find good quality training partners. Yeah, iron sharpens iron, and yeah, have a coach like Stuart Austin, who is the only person who has ever submitted Tom Aspinall. Mm. You yeah. believe everything he says. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Stefan, were you able to have good heavyweight training partners in your life? Yeah, yeah, not a, not a ton, because no. they're not easy to find. Right. So I just threw, threw around smaller well, guys a lot of the time, too, which I enjoyed. Blue corner so. from Brazil, 33 years old, stands in at uh, 6 feet 3 inches, 190 centimeters. This is his second pro fight, ladies and gentlemen, and he's representing the hybrid training center. Gilberto da Silva! Here's opponent in the red corner from Bangladesh. 25 years old, 6 feet 3 inches, 190 centimeters. Also his second pro fight, ladies and gentlemen. He's representing the Fight Zone London. The beggar from Bangladesh! Sure! Come on! So this is it, same height, same reach. They're evenly matched there and everything apart from age and weight. And weight. Where this LFL fight in the heavyweight division is scheduled three rounds of five minutes and the referee is Mr. Niels Burske. Gentlemen, three rounds of five minutes. You both know the rules. Make it a good and clean fight. Shake hands if you like. Oh, this might just be another blink and miss it, even though by saying that we've now got a free five minute round of wrestling. But yeah, all the data points towards a, an explosive first round here. So pay fight. attention, everyone. If you're shy, you want to gather a little bit of information here. You know, you won't know much about this guy who came in late, late notice. You, you've got to download a bit of data. Ooh. Oh, some big shots coming in from Kamali already. Oh! oh. oh. Gilberto Silva gives ripped. one right back. He's got him rocked, but back to his feet. Both these guys are quick and powerful, man. Watch oh. for the right. Yeah. Gilberto right comes back. a mean oh, swinging oh, and banging. Oh, my God. It's really a matter of who lands first now. Shaw is just taking it and trying to break through the wall. Sometimes you got to do a circle, do a little bit of moving, and and not just smash through. Oh, I gotta tell you, Gilberto Silva really tricked me into yeah. moving into the cage as slowly as he did, and then he just exploded here. Yeah. Good takedown by Kamali here, man. Oh, he's trapped the arm there. Crucifix. It's a great spot now. After the chaos that you had in the open field, now to slow it down and get a position is a really good feeling. And you expect Kamali's gonna throw some big elbows as they're, as they're dropping in there. Can he explode out of this? Is he keeps right? landing shots. Niels Burskin doesn't have another chance then to stop the fight. He's gonna have one or two more bucks and that'll be it. And then he's trapped and, the, and he'll have to stop it. Use a lot of energy and to get the elbows off. I think the referee's oh. gonna take a very close look at this. Oh, those elbows is near. Referee's gonna step in soon. Yeah, the elbows will stop it. If you Go cannot do defend do yourself, you referees, cannot. Referees not on shorts, but it's enough. Those two, this well, is smart, something, smart. but that'll be the, the last of the energy now. Can yeah. you get back to the fence and use it again? I think the referee has to call this well, soon. Do something. Yeah, he cannot get do out. Something on the rest of yeah, okay, he's going to stop it. That's it. a great right move. Well, we said it was going to be a oh, single round fight, and Lordy, was it just a single round fight? But they fit a whole lot of living God, in about two and a half minutes, gentlemen. The amount of action we got in the first 30 Minute, seconds, yeah. you, you now and then see in three rounds. After you, you have a fight, win or lose, a lot of the time, soon after, in, in, in many cases, you'll go back and look at it. And if you're shy, you'll be happy that you won. 
but there was a, he took punches that he didn't need to take in that nope. first minute. So you can be very happy that you won, be very proud of your performance, but also go in and go, you know, we didn't, th what can we learn from this? And he got ripped hard by Big Gilberto, but he, he did the right thing and ended up winning the fight. And it was interesting there that Kamali told the Silver that he was actually ill coming into this in that little bit of conversation there. So impressive as well that if he was under the weather and had some sickness to come out with the victory there. This is nonsense here. Gilberto lands a hard right, right, and then on the second time he hurts Kamali, Kamali, oh, there oh, it is, jeez. And then next time it's a right to a left hook. That's oh. a big punch, man. Kamali took it like a champ, though. That's the sort of shot that would send most people There's to the ball. There's another, a left hook this time. The but Kamali Spray then relied on his wrestling, down. his yeah. grappling. Look at this, beautiful yeah. way. Change the angle. Straight to the trapping of the arm and finishes him off. Yeah, you can see that was the last ditch attempt by De Silva to try and explode out, but Kamali has obviously got the grappling and had the experience of other big men in order to maintain his position and not get bucked off so easily. And in the end, he forced the referee to make a decision and the referee made the right decision. Right for this to the center of the ring, please. Your applause, uh, your applause, ladies and gentlemen, for both uh, giants, uh, Gilberto da Silva and Shaw Kamali. And the winner of this fight after two minutes and seven seconds in the first round by referee stops contest is the man in the red corner, Shaw Kamali. I'm here with your winner, Shaw Kamali. Shaw, that was a crazy fight. You're, you guys are going to be super proud of it. You're going to be really pleased with it when you go back and look. But your coaches are going to be mad at you for some of that action in the first 45 seconds. Listen, I apologize to the people. Um, I'm, fight, I'm ill right now. Like, people don't realize this. I didn't warm up at the back. Last two days, I've been just trying to have, like, clear this fever. I'm fighting and I'm just feeling like completely drained. I was warming up in the back. I had zero energy. So I came back, all I knew is, uh, I win just or will it through. It's, it's win or die. And you know, I won, so. Yeah, and, and you won in, in a smart, spectacular finish on top, but you also get to draw the experience of being at your worst and being able to grind that out of yourself. That's exactly what it is. My teammate Mario Pinto is fighting at the main event. He fought in the tournament, he was, he had the flu. He f you gotta beat these guys on their best days on your worst days, you know? And uh, that's what I learned from my team and I just wanna thank my coaches. And uh, yeah, welcome to the Shah Kamali Show. Yes, yes, and one last thing, Shah. Um, how is Pinto gonna do tonight in the main event? Wait and find out. Stay true for the main event, guys. <laughs> this is your winner, Shah Kamali. Stay tuned for the Kamali show. Indeed, we're going to be seeing some more of him in LFL events in the future. What an incredible, incredible talent. And to fight through with that level of illness as well, it uh, surely is something. To be sick and then take shots like that from Gilberto, Gilberto Silva. Yep. And here we go, a little bit of warm up for our eighth fight. So not the one coming up, but the one after. That's Georgie Kavelsda there. And there is his opponent, the undefeated Alain van der Merkt. Seven fights, seven finishes in his pro career. Uh, truly exciting prospect that we're gonna have the absolute privilege of watching him perform his art against uh, the incredibly tough, durable, and inventive Kalivsta. But before well, then, ladies and gentlemen, from the heavyweights, we go to the light heavyweights. Fighting out of the blue corner representing Poland, Lukas Kulpa! On the topic of Elaine van der Merck, who we just saw warming up, 
Lucas Culper fought him at LFL7. So Culper was the first person to get out of the first round with Van der Merck. He succumbed in round the third round uh, and lost by a rear naked choke. But Culper won his last fight to LFL9 against Stanislav Romanov. We've seen if you've been watching the whole broadcast this evening. Culper is, in many ways, like an old school MMA guy. He's Polish, but in that time, there wasn't much MMA in Poland. So he talked about training with his dad in basements and just going to the park and just trying to find places where he could practice this burgeoning art. Yeah. I also love the old school Polish using your body like a like a race car to advertise yeah. and make a little bit of money. Respect to, to Lucas Culper. And he said in the build-up he'd been training in Thailand as well for a lot of this. He said it's the hardest training camp of his life. This is a very special, very tough fighter who is going to be, in this fight, most likely making use of his long-term grappling experience. And then here's opponent fighting out of the red corner from Suriname, uh, Clyde Clyde Brunswick, Stefan, a uh, Dutch kickboxing legend, over 60 fights as a kickboxer. And I think it's really been amazing to see him grow as a fighter and as an MMA athlete in the duration of LFL. Yeah, 100%. And tonight is the next step for him because he really fights a complete MMA fighter yeah. tonight with good takedowns, good grappling. You talked about the Alan Vandenberg fight. He had some really good moments in that first fight. He even took Alan Vandenberg's back. and. Really looking forward to seeing how Brunswick is going to deal with the takedowns. Can he keep the distance? Can he pick him apart from a distance? Very interesting. Sometimes these uh, these uh, fighters that start to become generalists and learn every skill fall in love a little bit with the new ones. Suddenly, you, you know, you saw him wrestle last time out, and there's something about progressing quickly in a newer art form that makes you kind of really enjoy doing it. So in this case, I think he'll do better to keep the gap, but we shall see. Yeah, it's very interesting because the last time he wanted to really force a takedown. Today, he doesn't want to get anywhere near thinking of a takedown. But maybe he will surprise us as yes. well. Yeah, exactly from our very first fight where we saw Coreal expected to stand up kickbox and instead took it to his opponent Okorov in full grappling fashion. So maybe we'll see the same thing from Brunswijk. But his evolution from, you know, Brunswijk was on the very first LFL card number one where he lost via a wrestling decision. But since then, he's been working with Joey Birkenbosch, one of the Netherlands' most famous wrestlers. And yet to his last fight on LFL 10, where Brunswijk won via wrestling, as Robin was mentioning. Well, the man fighting out of the blue corner from Poland, 29 years old, stands in at uh, 6 feet, 1 inch, 187 centimeters. Eight professional fights on his record, four victories, four defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, he's representing MMA, Taleu Schlupk, Lucas Kulpa! Here's opponent in the red corner from Suriname. 31 years old, stands in at uh, 6 feet 3 inches, 193 centimeters. Three professional fights on his record, two victories, one defeat. Representing Dave's Gym and Juice Fit, Clyde Brunswick! Culper will have a little bit of height on Brunswijk and a tiny little bit more reach, but not much. They are reasonably even matched there in terms of age as well. So it will be, will be down on skill set. And this LFL fight in the light heavyweight division is scheduled three rounds of five minutes. Referees, Mr. Daniel Sharifi. Gentlemen, you know the rules, fight hard, fight clear, listen to my comments all the time. No questions? Touch gloves if you want, it's the back. Oh, and Brunswick yeah. has been glowering down yes. at Culper here in a Intense way. Intense is the right word, I think. I don't think he has blinked no. since stepping inside the cage. And that's for himself, because he probably, he's pretty aware that Culpa is not going to shrink from him. It's, it, he's expressing his own feelings here, not trying to necessarily undermine Culpa. 
So three rounds of five minutes. Brunswick in the orange, Culper in the gray. Let's see what happens in this. There's a lot of intensity in the cage right now. People talk about feints a lot. There's a lot of people overuse them, uh, but Culpa's re or, uh, Brunswick is really flashing some some uh, fake punches to try to draw out a response. A feint is not something that automatically works. It's a skill like anything else, and and you can see see these are very convincing. And he'll be able to draw a read. You can also make the man ignore the punches. Faint so much that he ignores you and then slips them through. Good jab there by Copa. Mm. Answer for that leg kick. It's interesting to see the, how the pair of the move, Copa, very agitated in his movements. Like you were saying, Robin, short, sharp little feints. And Brunswick yeah. is a lot more solid ground, kind of walking him down, just using posture. Yeah, and then he flash his hip or he'll flash his shoulder and see what uh, what Culpa responds to and what he doesn't. And all of that is giving him data to be able to land some shots. And it'll be interesting to see at what stage Culpa tries to make use of his grappling. But at the minute, Brunswijk's distance, as you'd expect from a kickboxer, seems to be very measured, very controlled. And with the feints, I think he's trying to pressure a takedown out of Culpa and then counter that. Mm -hmm because he hasn't really thrown a lot of strikes. Runs wide, that is. You can see Hulper when he's very cautious of rushing in and not getting caught on the counter there. Oh, remember, Brunswick. Yeah, and he just avoids. Kopa is a lot more active so far. Mm -hmm. Pressured by Brunswick, but hasn't really done much yet. You get the feeling he's trying to, to impale him on one big, one big punch or kick. This is what Culpa wants to do. He wants to put Brunswick with his back against the fence and then get into the clinch and work for his takedowns. Ooh. Yeah, that hurts. Brunswick is seeing everything and he's and he's definitely trying to pattern set. Culpa a little bit, but he, yeah, you're right, Stefan. He's not just doing enough yet that you'd give him half the round. He's, it, you'd give it to Culpa. Now he's got, he's got a hold of him. Oh, and get on top. There's an opportunity now to take advantage. Slip by Brunswick and Culpa make the most out, out of that. And now we get to see where Brunswick's clinch control, defensive wrestling is, and whether Culpa can take advantage of this. Brunswick's got two hands on one wrist here. Now it's more of a 50-50 position. If he can break free from this and then get back to the middle, it's going to be a huge confidence yeah. boost for Brunswick. Yeah. You see, may, may see him get more active after that. You're right. And but he's still got to accomplish that still. That's a nice choice. And it resulted in a separation. Yeah, he went for a spinning elbow, I think, but... You didn't land the elbow, but you got free. Yep. No. There's a jab. Good jab answer, though, by Culpa. And just like you said, Stefan, as soon as he was able to separate oh, his own work, beautiful elbow. Hand. Yeah, tucked it over. You see, Brunswick is getting more loose now. Yeah. There's the left hook. Power. You can see Brunswick is just trying to draw him in, just trying to make him think, change the angle. Brunswick also wants Culpa to throw one or two like that and then catch him with it. But Culpa threw one or two to get to the hips and get to the body. Good defense so far by Brunswick. He's not biting on the guillotine. No. He's using that underhook. Yeah. He wants to spin and break free again. And we'll see 20 seconds left in this round. It could go either way here. I like that from Culpa, the foot stamps. Yeah. If you're Culpa, oh. you feel pretty good about this round. I think Brunswick hurt me. They're right in front of us. Oh. Oh. Jumping knee by Brunswick. There's the aggression. 
an intriguing first round. Robin, if uh, you had to say who you'd call it that, very even, but who would have the advantage? Very even. I think Bruns, both guys will be very happy with that round. Uh -huh. Brunswick was able to defend being taken down to the ground and grapple in tight a little bit and hit on the separation, and Culpa worked more. Culpa was able to work more and uh, did a little bit of damage and wasn't hit with anything clean. So both guys going into the second round liking the first round. And intriguing just how different it was to our previous Ooh. heavyweight fight. There was the shot. That overhand right was the single best shot of the round, but a lot of ra a lot of judges will just see Culpa, all the small things he did, and maybe give it to him. What do you think, Stefan? Yeah, it's, it's a very difficult round to score, yeah. really. I hope the second round, Brunswick is going to get a little more loose, let go a little second more, time. fight in a higher pace. Maybe. I really feel that it's going to give a lot more problems for, for um, Kulpa. Maybe Brunswijk being able to get out of those clinches, yeah. the area he maybe you necessarily wouldn't want to be in, but gives him that more confidence to know he can throw and get caught and escape that clinch against the fence. Yeah, and he, he created possibilities for himself from the clinch with, with the elbow, with the knees. So it's good to see. When we were talking about Mario Pinto, our main event, the, the champion, about what makes him so successful is he's super decisive. When it's time to throw, he throws. And uh, Brunswick, Brunswick was a little hesitant in round one, and he needs to have that decisiveness himself here. So Brunswick now knows that he can stop the takedowns. So I like the Ooh. good left hook there. Yep. I like the pressure from him now. I want him to keep Culpa between the orange line and the fence. Mm. The, uh, that left hook was set up by a fake body punch. Just sort of threw a fake body punch, which loaded the left hook. That loaded something different. Yeah. And we see pace slow down a little bit again. Stiff jab there by Brunswijk. I want to see more counters from Brunswijk. Through six minutes, this is the kind of fight that coaches don't like when it comes down to the end because both guys will feel like they're winning. And that's actually really dangerous to go into a into a decision when you feel like you're winning, but it can somebody else sees it a different way. So one of them needs to really have something definitive happen in this round. And that happens all the time with the judges. Mm -hmm. Brunswijk on this one does seem to have a, oh, a little right bit more in. a little bit more control of the ring. Yeah. Pushing Culper back a bit more compared to the first round, which does make a big difference and is part of the judges' criteria. And if Brunswijk starts lo loading up on him and landing on him a lot, it'll be as a direct consequence to his patience to this point. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. He might have to give up a round to get this data to be able to land these shots, but, but he knows what he's doing. He's super experienced, super knowledgeable. And he seems to be finding a home for some of those nice. strikes. Oh, a beautiful takedown there by Culpa, though. And this is interesting. Knee. Yeah. And this could be a huge moment for Culpa if he manages to. Oh, he's looking for the back here. He's got an arm stuck. Got it locked in, I think. Has he got it? It could be the rear naked nope. choke. Nope. Good defense by Brunswijk defense. to pull it nope. forward. This could be it. He's, he's hidden quite how locked in that could be. He's got it locked in. His hands are hidden. So Brunswijk wants to take that top hand and peel it off, but he's hidden it behind. Good job by Brunswijk, though. He's going to end up on top. Oh, nice job. Beautiful reversal from Brunswijk, and that could have been a fight-ending moment for Culpa. And he let it slip for his fingers. Oh, what an elbow. Good elbow on the break. Look at the eyes of Brunswijk now. Yeah. That woke him up. Brunswijk, just before that takedown off the flying knee, had landed two or three oh, big ones. And a spinning elbow. elbow. And, and a jump in knee attempt. Oh, and another elbow. He was taken down off the knee another earlier, one. but was decisive enough to throw it again. Being able to survive a rear naked choke moment like that is going to give him a huge confidence boost. Back, I thought the fight was over. It could have been done there, but fantastic defense. All of the work Brunswijk did in round one to, to learn the rhythm and the timing is nice all working job there. Elbow. Got his hips out of the way, put his feet on the mat, boom, elbow. Both fighters looking a little tired here. Yeah, they, they just spend a ton of energy. Yeah. Kolba trying to finish with the rear naked choke and then Brunswijk fighting that and then the, the series of elbows and jumping knees. Ah, 
high octane round, but Brunswijk is putting some yeah. sheer force in between these shots. But Brunswijk's got the, the rhythm, the timing, and the range all dialed in now. Every single time he pressures Kolpa, though, he's doing really well. Every single time he lets his foot off the gas, Kolpa is able to land. Ooh, 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 body. Nice body shot. Oh, again, again. The way he talks into yeah. those shots, Brunswijk. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Kolpa doesn't even bling, though. Oh, that is oh, he does. tough cookie. Yes. He may have been hurt by that body shot, but he sure didn't show it. Let's go. 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 A good judge would see that one for Brunswijk. He just landed a lot of punches through the second half of that round. It's a tough one, though, Robin, because where do you put the fact that uh, Kolpa almost finished the fight? That he had his back, he had the rear naked choke. How do you... Yeah. you know, I'm, glad I'm, I'm glad I'm not in the judge's seat right now to decide which, which did the more damage, technically. You, they tend to, they don't use this word so cleanly, but they tend to favor damage, right? When you almost choke me, you don't do as much damage to me. It's a threat, and it's near fight ending, but it doesn't have that same impact on the body and effect of the rest of the fight. But, yeah, we shall see. You certainly wouldn't want to tell your fighter that they're up two rounds if you're either guy. Not at all. I mean, we could maybe say first round culprit, second round... Brunswijk, but yeah, even then I feel very shaky on, on that because tough, tough fight. Both of these men showing incredible spirit. And like you said, Stefan, Culpa just eating some wound up top shots from Brunswijk with barely even a blink or a noticeable body change. Yeah, Culpa is as tough as they come. And here we go, the third and final round in this light heavyweight bout between Brunswijk and Kolpa. All to play for for both fighters here. You can tell how good of a, of a, a striker and how experienced of a kickboxer Brunswijk is because he can land these single shots where there's no tell, there's no load, it just they just get expressed. It's a real skill. It's beautiful to watch. And even all those feints from earlier in round one helped make it all possible later in the fight as he gets better and better. It's a good body kick by Kolpa there. Yeah. Hit clean flesh. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Right through the middle. Good answer there by Kolpa. A nice leg kick again. Oh, just hacking with an elbow there. The Brunswijk has missed a couple times, but just barely with yeah. some really big elbows. Loaded up on those. Nice. Yeah. The shake of the head from Brunswijk, which often means that out. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, there's the power again. Oh, but what a takedown from Culpa. Power time. And he takes the back. Interesting. Good he got the back before. So can he maintain this as a position? He's got, his, he's got his hooks in this time. Last time he was, didn't have that on the rear naked and was able to be shook off by Brunswijk. And now he has three minutes to work. Oh, look at this. Really good job by Brunswijk. Moves his leg backward to, to get both legs free. Perfect timing. And that was a big moment that Culpa let slip through his fingers there. And Brunswijk won the small battles in that exchange. When Brunswijk throws a hook, uh, Culpa actually moves towards him and then takes it off the forearm or the bicep. Actually gets him tighter during the hook. And I was wondering how much that takedown took out from Culpa, and he did a very low energy kind of fall into Brunswijk there to look for a takedown and just got bounced off. 
Oh, oh. there's the power. Oh, he felt that. There's another one. That little stutter knee. I think he's gonna go throw a couple more of those. Can go to the head too. He throws everything on 200%. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun to watch. It's a great fight, great fight. Back and forth, incredibly well balanced. It's really swung on these small moments. Culpa's defensive movements are sort of a little bit unpredictable and irregular, but they work. His targets are just slightly not where you expect them to be when you throw at him. And let's not forget as well, this could yes, be what the winner of this fight could end up facing the, uh, the winner of our light heavyweight title earlier. So both men will be keenly aware of that and being leaving it all on the line. Oh. Oh. He came back with one. This is what Kalpa wants, especially in the last minute and a half of this round, the third round. Get positioning of the head. See if he can get another takedown. Because that the takedown could be the deciding matter in this round. 100%. Both fighters have thrown a lot. Maybe on this one, we've had a little bit more from Brunswijk. But if Kolpa gets a takedown for a minute, that could swing it to his favor, which might give him the match. Could steal the round, could steal the fight. Yeah, this minute is the fight, potentially. Which is so heartbreaking after 14 hard minutes. Good elbow at Brunswick there again. Ah. Culpa never looks shook or hurt. Brunswick looks really, really tired. So it's been a hard 14 and a half, man. He throws everything hard, takes a lot of energy, especially when you miss and you, you have to. <laughs> Balance yourself back out again. Good job by Culpa there. Yes. Getting that control of the ring and the grappling exchange. Just trying to tell the judges, look, I'm in control. Just a fantastic fight, though. Both just so much will. So much heart. Oh, up and over. That hit hard. Oh, what a fight we just witnessed there. That elbow was so jarring from here. And look at that guy, he just... He doesn't look hurt or shook from anything. An incredible, incredible display from both athletes there. And I tell you again, I am glad not to be sitting in the judge's chair and having to decide who wins that. I could make an argument, I feel, for either of them. But if you had to yeah. call it, Robin? I don't know. Yeah, I really don't. I don't know how they're going to be thinking, you know? It, it'll come down to that third round, presumably. And it was similar to some of the others where Lucas did a lot, but Clyde was the cleaner. He landed the cleaner shots, so. And it depends how much, obviously a big rule is the um, effective striking or grappling. Yeah. How much does Colt getting the back yeah, twice. Making, that, making this round in this fight? Oof. Obviously he was unable to do too much with it, but that's a controlling position. Oh. That was We're a jarring collision. Oh, there were so many excellent, excellent moments in this fight. Find us to the center of the ring, please. Your applause, ladies and gentlemen, for both fighters, Lucas Kulpa and Clyde Brunsbeck. And after three rounds, we've counted the points. The winner is the man in the red corner, Clyde Brunsbeck. Congratulations, Clyde, both on the win and on an excellent fight. That was a lot of fun to watch. Probably like a really intense fight to be a part of. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it was a good fight. I uh, can do better, can do better, uh, and I will do better. It was a cool one to watch. So you could see in those first five minutes, you were decoding his rhythm and his timing and the distance, and then just got better and better as the fight went on. Yeah, true. Uh, the first round, was just uh, checking and uh, just, uh, yeah, see uh, what, what he was doing and try to make a plan. Yeah. How many fights in your life now? Do you, do you even know the number? 
Actually, I, uh, I think between the 70 and the 80 kickboxing fights and now also MMA. It shows. You're just so comfortable here. You get better as the fight goes on. Thank you for a wonderful fight. Yeah. Thank you. Clyde Brunswick. I mean, what a back and forth fight. I wouldn't have been upset for either of them to win it, but you can understand why the judges made that decision, Stefan. Yeah, 100%. He landed the bigger shots. He had some, uh, some tough moments on the ground. Colby had a couple good takedowns, a couple good moments, but definitely the, the bigger shots, the more damage was done by Clyde Brunswick, 100%. And we can see here the build-up for our co-main event of the evening. That's Ahmed Sami getting ready for the attempt at the light heavyweight title. Looking focused, looking fierce, ready to go. And there is the man who will also be challenging for our vacant light heavyweight title. Usually, Usri Belgari. Both of them backstage now, just ensuring they're ready for what might be one of the biggest fights of their lives. Well, the next LFL fight, ladies and gentlemen, is in the middleweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner from Georgia, Georgie Felice! Well, as you mentioned earlier, it might be a good night for Georgians. We've had some big Georgian upsets, some big Georgian fighters coming through, and we'll see whether Kalivste is able to make that happen. Um, yeah, this is a Georgian wrestling champion, yep. so it kind of goes without saying what you're going to expect to see from him. This man can wrestle. Yeah, he can exactly. wrestle very, very well, and it's very interesting because Alain van der Merck's got a lot of submissions on, it, on his record, but can he take the fight to the ground? So today I think we may see a lot more striking because of that from Alain van der Merck, and it's going to be interesting to see. I'm happy to see Kvelice back after that fight with Juicy Belgari, which he, uh, he was doing well in that first round, but, you know, getting caught by a, a world-class striker yeah. in Juicy Belgari. There's no shame in that. Excellent wrestler. Going to be an amazing fight to watch. Yeah, an excellent wrestler and a really sort of erag uh, erratic and arrhythmic striker, which is fun, like, and hard. It's hard to anticipate what he's going to do because he's not behaving in the way that your training partners behave. So yeah, this could be a really cool dynamic. Can he continue the Georgian streak? Yeah, we shall see. That's the big question here. I believe it's 3-0 in the big leagues this weekend. <laughs> and you know, LFL is part of the big leagues. Yes. Oh, of course. But let's also not forget that Khalid, as Robin mentioned, he is a striker as well. He's had three wins by TKO, KO, four by submission in his professional career. You know, this, he can do everything, but yep. having that wrestling background, it just is so important for mixed martial arts. Sometimes, like, as a viewer, the more unpredictable strikers are, are the most fun to watch. Because, and as a fighter, sometimes they're the least fun to fight. Because it's it's hard to interpret his movement. It's not the same movement as, as you're accustomed to. But he uses that to kind of get you off balance or flat-footed and then wrestle you. And he's got a really good overhand. He showed that in the fight against Jusri. So, when Alan van der Merck cannot take him down, and he throws that power at them. It's yeah. going to be very interesting to see how I, how I learned from the Merck is going to react to that. Uh, you also notice Georgie, I believe he took the, the fight with Usri on a short notice, if I'm oh, yeah. not mistaken. He's in much slicker shape here, as you can tell. Yep. You know, he was prepared for this fight. Well, then, here's opponent fighting out of the red corner from Belgium. Alan from the man! Here he is, one of our picks for fight of the evening and a rising LFL star. I mean, Van der Merck, he's already fought in 2024. Fought about a month ago, which he, uh, against Zoran Dodd, which he won in strikes. But yeah, Alan Van der Merck has been on an LFL 5, 6, 7, 9, won all of them. He fought Lo Lucas Culper in the previous, who we saw in the previous fight. He moved up, he's normally a middleweight, but he moved up and defeated Culper. And we could see in that previous fight just how good, just how tough Culper is. And yet Van der Merck went up to a higher weight division and managed to finish him. That's the sort of special athlete we're talking here. Yeah, and he's fought at heavier, he's fought at heavyweight and amateur too. Um, yeah, he's just a real good technician and tactician. 
it's it's not fancy what he does. It's excellent, you know? I don't think he's gonna be the guy with the jumping spinning kick. He's just gonna do all the fundamental things very, very right. Well, that's what happens when you train with one of the best middleweight grapplers on the planet and right near Derrida. You do, you have to do everything right, else you're gonna get tapped every single 10 seconds. Yeah, and uh, you know, quote, failure, losing rounds, is really, really good for your development. It's important for your development. Yep. And this guy's all about development. He's a little better every time we see him. And let's also to put a little bit more of excitement and worm on this fight. I've been told by, you know, the members of staff, the Mac NFL, that whoever wins this is gonna be in line for the middleweight title. Very interesting. So there is a lot of weight on this fight to see who can get that strap after this. Fuzzy, out of the blue corner from Georgia. 37 years old, stands in at 6 feet 2 inches, 188 centimeters. 16 professional fights on his record, 11 victories, 5 defeats. He's representing Gymnasia Tbilisi. Ladies and gentlemen, your applause is for him. Georgi Felice! His opponent in the red corner from Belgium, 30 years old, 6 feet 2 inches, 188 centimeters. Six fights on his professional record, six victories. He is representing the Combat Brothers. Top boy, Ellen van der We can see that similar height, well, identical height, but Van der Merck has that big reach advantage. Perfect for submissions and striking, and we'll see whether... This LFL fight in the middleweight division is scheduled three rounds of five minutes, and the, uh, the referee is Mr. Philip van Heusden. I say stop, you stop. Touch gloves, you want to? Go back to your corner. Can we go for this top contender fight in the middleweight division at LFL? Both guys icy cold here. If you're Georgie, I think you want to get on a lane early and quick. Pressure. Maybe surprise him with the speed and the intensity early. Good luck, kick there yeah. by Van der Give him another one. Now go in with the right hand. It's a great way to uh, get the explosion out of the Oh, the kick. Oh, man, that landed. Got him. Got him. That's it. Over. Crazy. Wow. Blink and you'll miss it. What a performance from Vandenberg. We told you this boy was special. Two low kicks and a high kick. Good night. Van der Merck, he's going to be in line for the heavyweight, for the middleweight title at some point very soon for LFL. After a performance like that, he's shouting to the matchmakers at LFL, Donovan, Andy, Jules, and saying, look, I deserve that strap, I deserve that title. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that, chance. that is the next chapter for him for sure after a performance like that. I want to see that kick again. Hopefully we can see the whole fight even in, in replays because there's two inside kicks and then I believe three kicks were thrown the entire fight. I'm not sure we'll have time to watch the full fight. Yeah. Go on for too long. Yeah, it's true. Frelitsa never had a chance to get going. No. In fact, when we were open, okay. There we go. He's got him moving to his left, so the right weapon. Oh, oh, the jab oh it was after the hand the after it. It was the knuckles right after it. Yep. Yeah, we had a weird angle before. The kick actually, and he falls in, and I mean that in a good way. He allows his body to fall into the punch, right? Bink. Beautiful. It's a weird uh, shot, but your whole body weight falls into the punch. And Felicia Very probably cool. doesn't expect a jab right after that. Great balance by Vandenberg to be able to throw that right after the kick. And you see what kind of athlete he is the body control he has. You, you gotta be special to stop the Jordan streak this week. Yeah, you're going, yes. against, you're going against fate itself. Grand fighters to the center of the ring, please. And of course, ladies and gentlemen,
ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for both fathers. Georgi Kvelitsi and uh, Ellen van der Merck. And the winner of this fight after 30 seconds in the first round by knockout, the man in the red corner, Ellen van der Merck. You're gonna do the uh, story on Instagram? Yeah, I because think we should. Echo is there, but yeah, yes. I don't have a million followers. <laughs> Let's take that I out. I don't have a million followers, so it could help me. Yes, I think it could help you. Mm. With a performance like that, I mean, yeah, we gotta put a bink on the, on the internet. Mm. I didn't... He told me it was a head kick, but I don't know what he did. So actually, you threw the left kick up and you fell into a punch right behind it. So your left hand had the full weight of your body propelling into him. Pretty cool. Thanks. <laughs> You've, it's, what is that, seven in a row now? You just seven in a row, six first round finishes. Now I think it's time for the LFL title. I was just speaking with Donovan. Belgium, baby, yeah. Belgium. I was just speaking with Donovan, and you will be fighting in your next fight for the middleweight title here at LFL. How does that make you feel? Yeah, very good. Uh, very much sacrifices, big team. They all help me. Team in the public. Thanks, everybody. It's hard, but... Uh, it's worth it. It's worth it, yeah. yeah. Everything in life worth doing is hard. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, congratulations, man. And this is, it only makes sense that's what's next for you. You've come up through LFL, defeated everybody. Yeah. It's time. It was too easy. It was too easy. <laughs> Your winner, Elaine Vandermark. Cheers. I always love seeing a fighter who has that level of confidence. And yep. can you blame him when he fights like that and can do a backflip? Yeah, he's, he's an incredible athlete, getting better every single fight. Training with Rainier the Ritter, training with Team Musasi, some of the best middleweights on the planet. So, really looking forward to seeing him in the middleweight fight in his next fight. Hopefully in April, he could definitely fight in April again. I think after a performance like that. Yeah, oh, sure. It's a really good point. You know, sometimes even in a minute, you hurt something just huh? by exertion, your own neck, your own back, something. But he sure seems good right now. And yes, of course, we're gonna make this into a bink on my Instagram. Kick, bink. Beautiful. That weird little short knuckles, full body weight falling into it. Kind of a, a when you're in flow and everything's working, sometimes you almost improvise in the milliseconds, and that's what happened there. And what happened was Felice blocked the kick, and then you relax right after. Yes. So you, you, you tense up all your muscles to block that kick, and then you relax and boom, yeah. or as you say, bink. Bink. Yeah. Can I say it before you say it? So make sure that you go on LFLMMA.com, you find our social media channels, you follow us on all of them to make sure you can stay up to date on the news, catch the highlights, see the new fights that are coming up. Like this one, Pinto versus Aras, which will be our main event for the heavyweight strap. Yeah, and make sure that while you uh, have this, we have a little break coming up too. So why don't you go on to Ticketmaster and see, uh, get yourself a ticket for the April 21st event, which is gonna be another banger, NFL 12. See you very shortly. I welcome you for the levels finally. The big shots coming in. Warrior spirit. Perfectly executed. We have a winner. Kasim Aras, I will fight for the heavyweight title. I am from Aachen, from KKS Sparta Gym. Um, I will fight against uh, Mario Pinto. I don't know uh, much about him. I just go and fight. I started competing uh, wrestling with uh, nine years. I compete in uh, world championships and Europe championships in international tournaments. After when I left the German national team and I start with MMA in the Netherlands. You know, it's the most complete sport in the, in the world. You need not just strength and power, and you need also, you need to be clever, you need to be fast, athletic, 
for me it's no problem. Ground game, up game, you know, stand up. I am ready for everything. For me, every fight is serious and uh, I respect every fight and every fighter. I give always my best. You need to be always ready because you never know which chance you can get next. I will surprise the people. My name is Mario Pino. I was born in Portugal and I trained in London Fight Zone. I put on a fair performance last time, but I'm excited to show a dominant one this time. I have never had someone actually run at me in a fight, so that was something new to deal with. Uh, there was a fight where I was going to struggle to look good against, but uh, I got the win and I didn't really have the clear instinct this time in this fight. But uh, that's really what I've been focusing now. I want to finish my opponent and just be stuck to them, give them no time to breathe. What is different about this fight? Definitely the change of opponent, the way his body shape, he's quite short, stocky. Big difference compared to my last opponent, like I think like 10 inch difference. So uh, it's going to be exciting. He's more of a wrestler, not too much of a grappler. So I'm quite excited for this one. He's much more powerful, I'd say, just because of the way he's built. So I'll go watch for the right hand. And definitely, I, obviously I have the reach advantage. So I'm definitely going to use that. Closer and closer, I just get colder and I got to do it either way. It's the whole point of discipline. Doesn't matter how I feel, I have to get the job done. But I mean, it feels great now, especially being the first heavyweight champion in, uh, in Levels Fight League, the first Dutch MMA promotion. So definitely like I've, I've set history there, set in stone and uh, put on some great performances. Then I'm looking to go for the big shows to dominate. So I'm fighting Ahmed again. This time runs out here too. Good, Belga Rui being oh. in the blue corner. Ahmed Lee Sami. I'm sure I'm gonna change the outcome this time. Yes, I'm really prepared for the fight. Now after these years of drilling, advancing my striking game for MMA. I think I, I changed a lot. I think a lot changed since our last fight. I want him to bring the fire, because I will bring the fire, and I hope for a big clash. Important for me to avenge him, avenge the loss. Well, we are here. We're at the meet of the event, the co-main event of LFL 11. We have Sami versus Belgari for the vacant light heavyweight title. God, I cannot wait. So let's get these gentlemen out as soon as we can. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the co-main event of the evening. An LFL title fight in the light heavyweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner representing Egypt, Ahmed Sami! Ahmed Sami! Ahmed Sami is, in many cases, a very severely underrated fighter. We've spoken before a little bit in this broadcast about these unorthodox, awkward, unusual fight styles, and Sami is that in a nutshell. Yeah, 100%. A lot of opponents, past opponents, said about him, I may have underestimated yeah. him before the fight, and after the fight they say he's one of my toughest, if not the toughest opponent I fought. That's precisely yes. what Tom Breeze said when yep. uh, he fought him. And Tom Breeze, ex-UFC, he was the uh, now now PFL, but was held multiple titles in LFL. No, no. Uh, 
really incredible, incredible fighter, and he spoke as Sammy is the hardest fighter he's ever gone yeah. up against. And, and um, uh, Yusri knows from experience because he did fight him, right? So you've had that tactile experience of how good he is. And uh, yeah, nobody should be making that mistake again. The, oh. the data is out there, like the information is out there. This guy is a very, very tough out, skilled everywhere, mentally super tough, really driven to win the minutes and win the little battles. He's a tough fight, man. Yeah, he's very calm, he's very good at decision making at the right time, man. I definitely think that Yusui was still very much growing into his MMA fighting style at that point. And we see a completely different Yusui Belgari to, today. Someone who is much more used to fighting in a cage yeah. with small gloves. So really, really looking forward to this yeah, fight. Too. Seeing what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a fascinating chess match, that's well, for sure. Man, his opponent fighting out of the red corner from Tunisia. Yusri Belharawi! Stefan, you were just talking about uh, Yusri Belgari. I mean, another another Dutch kickboxing yep. legend. Went to the top of the four sport. He beat Pereira and Wilness in kickboxing. He fought Adesanya. But even now, it's that growth. He's now with Team uh, Team Teixeira, working with Glover, who's actually in his corner tonight. Yep. And he's evolved as, you know, when we first saw him in the MMA scene as a clear kickboxer into an MMA athlete. Well, you need to learn how to use that striking with smaller gloves, with a different distance, with someone who can take you down. And that's a scary thought when you're still very much growing in that, pro in that process. And he's done that, you know, and he's, he's been grinding over at Teixeira MMA with Pereira, with Teixeira on top of him. So we see a very improved fighter with world-class striking, which is now ready for the cage. Yeah, when you are only 31 years old, but you have the level of combat experience he has, he's not even in his prime yet. Uh, it is really exciting, this generation of the striker, the kickboxer, who becomes uh, LFL champions, UFC champions, the best in the world. You know, Pereira did it after only four MMA fights. So, and he's training with Pereira regularly. It's gonna be, a really, really fun fight to watch because he lost last time and because, as we keep saying, Sami is such a tough out. And this is a title fight and a grudge match. Can you get and better five than that? Rounds. That's like putting fire on fire. Yeah. But when this kid is on, man, he makes some gorgeous, violent art out there in the cage or the ring. Oh, his last fight for LFL was against uh, Georgia Kalivsa, who we saw in the last fight, who usually finished with one of the most gorgeous knees you'll find. If you go back on uh, you know, the LFL social channels, check the YouTube, you can watch that last fight. It's really worth seeing. When introducing first, the man fighting out of the blue corner from Egypt, 30 years old, stands in at six feet, 184 centimeters. 14 fights on his record, 11 victories and three defeats. He's representing Tap Out Fighting Center. Ladies and gentlemen, your applause for Ahmed Sami! His opponent in the red corner from Tunisia. 31 years old, stands in at six feet, five inches, 196 centimeters. Nine professional fights on his record. Six victories, three defeats. Representing Jim Royal, the babyface assassin, Yusri Belharawi. We'll see on the tail of the tape just coming up that there is a big height and reach advantage for Yusri Belgari there. And he's gonna, if he's gonna make it in the MMA career and really push on, this is gonna be where he excels if he manages to make use of those natural advantages. When this LFL title fight in the light heavyweight division is scheduled, five rounds of five minutes. Referees, Mr. Nils Burskin. Look at Yusri's body. That is a fighter's body, long and lean. Good and clean fight. Shake hands if you like. Oh, step back.
Here we are, our light heavyweight co-main event for the title. Okay, A grudge match, Fight. Belgari versus Sami. Here we go. Expect a lot of feints from Yusri. Yusri does like fighting people in Southpaw. That rear stabbing kick is available to him. He uses that really well. But Sami automatically showing he's not here to take part. He's here to try and win this. Smart to kick with a kicker. Like, you can't just give away the, the kicking range. You have to either push in or kick with him. And we'll see here their last fight where they fought in the UAE. They were very tentative, the pair of them, unwilling to pull the trigger. And you can see that mutual respect is still there, but a little bit of aggressiveness might be the key to win this fight. But you don't want to rush in too fast. Yusri also had that sort of reoccurrence where he didn't do enough in a contender series fight too. There's, there's that rear kick. Good kicks by Sami. So far, too, though. Yeah, smart. Because if you give away the distance, uh, Yusri can do whatever he wants out at wide distance. Yeah, beautiful right takedown. Yeah. Good job by, Ju by Yusri, though, to get right back up. And that was a sprint takedown, and literally across the entire cage. You got to time that perfectly, though, because else you get caught. Yes. And we'll see what all those hours into Shara's gym has done for Yusri's wrestling here. Well, he was right up to his feet and lifted Ahmed up as well. You either want to lift Ahmed super high or keep him super low. Look at this. Nice reversal there. Easily. Yeah. He just waited for his moment, then he acted on it. And with those long legs, he can really fire in some knees here. And he's very good in the clinch. I, I have trained with him a while back, around a year ago. But his clinch, Yusri's clinch is really, really good. Yeah, and he can just smash away at the meat here of the thighs. Especially when the legs are straight and you get a knee on the front. Yeah. Right above the knee, that hurts. Yeah, the curve of the quadricep yep. muscle, yeah, it really does. A much more than somebody watching at home that has never had. Take a baseball bat to your leg, you know? Actually, don't do that, but Try that's it. what it would be like. <laughs> Imagine that. Just do it. Yeah. Good work by Sami, but e equal work by Yusri. Sami with an elbow on the break. Now Yusri's got his hands joined underneath. And it'd be interesting here that when they do break, if Yusri tries to fire an elbow or just something in that little clinch, but Sami is smiling. This. He's smiling, he's making faces, he's animated. Yeah, and everyone's different. You want to be performing authentic to you. And, and if, he's, if you're a playful person, you want to be playful in there. Now there's an oh, elbow. Look at this. Oh, Sammy with the nice timing. And now we'll see whether Yushri can pull the trigger and can start making use of this height and reach advantage. As you just said, Robin, I want to see him use that back leg more. Mm. Stab with it through the middle. Stab. Yep. There it is. There it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a bladed weapon almost. You can yep. pierce and puncture with it. It can be scary to use too. Mm -hmm. When you hit the elbow with your toes. Yeah. Oof. You can break a toe off. And it sounds like I'm kidding, but you can find lots of that on the internet if you look at, at enough kickboxing. And remember as well, as this is a championship bout, this is five rounds there it is. in five minutes. Yep. So these fighters need to be thinking how they might last if they have oh, to go that was the fourth, a fifth round. Nasty check. Shin on shin. Oh, perfect. Step in me by Yusri. And beautiful defense on that takedown attempt. It's a great minute for Yusri right now. He seems to be getting in the flow and pulling that trigger a little bit more that he spoke about before the fight. He's a lot more active than in the first fight. Sammy has switched to orthodox now. I don't know if it's because of the checked kick or what it is. Or to take away some of the, the spear with the rear leg, but he has switched stances now. This is a fascinating fight. 
And the, the difference of the two personality of the men is also adding something. You have Yutri's ice cold demeanor and Sammy's almost playful mocking attempt to wind him up. It's yeah, and, and if you can undermine a guy who likes to be serene. Now, it's, uh, Yutri has so much experience, it's hard to do, but. Good elbow, door. Yes. You have balanced him with it. He, you cut him open, too. Oh, oh, oh. And Sammy had a nasty little right hand when he was on the floor, and he is leaking. Oh, clarity. man. It's not, he's saying it's, it's the back of the head, but even it where, isn't. where he's pointing, that is not considered the back of nope. the head from a technical standpoint, from a rule standpoint. Behind the ear is a completely legal target. What a first round, and yeah, I really thought when he shot him for the takedown, Sammy, that that was him trying to win the point, but it seemed to have backfired, and he's got himself a bad wound and really allowed Yusri to land a hard, hard shot. A lot of the story of this fight is the development. There's that rear weapon, the development of Yusri, which is always going to, every fight he's going to get better, is so driven, and he works with great people. But you see it now, This th that was a really good, MMA round. And you can't see it on the camera with the replay, but we have a doctor in and they're checking out the cut. The referee is there. So there is a chance the fight won't continue. The doctors are having a look. It would have to be really bad to be okay. a stoppage it looks in like it's that area. But if they're looking at it, it's just probably a pretty nasty gash. Looks like we will get a second round for this light heavyweight strap. Yusri's already in the center, see? Okay. Really believe that Sami got saved round. by the bell there. Right. Yeah. If Yusri had 10 seconds more to work, that could have been it. And we'll see whether that gives Yusri the confidence in this next round to unleash, to unload his weapons a little bit more. That was a very mature, uh, complete round. You know, he got better as the round went on. He learned throughout the minutes of the round, defended takedowns really well, struck in the clinch. It just great round for Yusri. Goes to the body. And we'll see as well, it looks like Sammy isn't being, oh, I, just as I say that, yeah. he starts making faces again. So he's feeling good. It's hard to undermine a guy with as much experience as Yusri has, but it's worth trying. Especially if you don't need him to be undermined and you benefit from behaving this way. If it, if it, if it inflates you, it's worth doing. If it deflates him, even better. But if it doesn't, as long as you're getting benefit from it, it's worth doing. This is the second round of our five round fight for the light heavyweight title at LFL. Sami's not really biting on the face from U Street. Oh, very little. Yeah. There was that stabbing kick that you've been speaking about, fellas. Yep. Sometimes the feints get you to, to dismiss more, and that's how you slip something in. You get your man dismissing all your feints, saying, oh, I can see everything, and then you hit him for real. Sometimes a feint elicits a reaction, and sometimes it makes you complacent. Gotta be so annoying, that smile on yeah. the face. No. Smart. Sami. That's probably part of his game plan with that shorter reach to try and make Yusri lunge in and yep. catch him. Lure him in and land. Get a takedown or counter his, his whatever he throws at him. Yusri checks these kicks so well and that hurts bad. Those are sometimes really high impact things. There was a check in round one where Yusri just took it straight off the shin bone. And that was a rough one. It seems that Sammy's recovered from that cut. He's not looking like he's moving slower, his eyes are clear. He was definitely hurt at the end of the first round, but yeah, he's good now. We're almost halfway through the second round. This one's been very close. Both fighters just throwing two free strike combinations. Nothing big, so really at this stage it could be anyone's round. One big moment and it could swing it in their favor. Good left hook there by Sami. Nice. Uh, Straight right to the body. Sami with a couple on the exit. Smart. Giving each other very, very little to work with. A very technical yeah. fight going on here. Game of three games. Gone right hand to the body a few times. It's a good jab by Usri there. 
And Sammy goes, try it again, right here. Oh. And Yusri Yus hit him with a knee while Sammy was coming in then. Yeah, Sammy landed a couple of shots, but Yusri ripped the knee. Another. Timing on those knees. Yeah. Oh, there it is, he wins. He's got him run. He's Can he finish it right here? There's another knee. But Yusri is taking his time. And Sammy's still there. Sammy's there, yeah. He's got a chin on him. He sure as hell does. The crowd is going wild. Well. Another good strike. And another knee. Sammy shot for the takedown. And Yushri's oh. trying some big elbows. Oh, elbows man. are there again. Oh, they're right in front Heavy of us. Elbows. They are vicious. And Sammy yeah. needs a takedown here to try and stem the inevitable tide of Yushri Belgari. Oh, you can hear the bone on bone oh. in the air. Sammy is committed, but Yusri's heavy on him. Now he's got the hands separated and he's lifting him up. Oh, and the knee. Here Look comes the knee. Look at the knee. He's got him hurt still. He still hasn't come oh. his head body shot. Yusri is picking him to Keep pieces. The here. On. Oh, beautiful oh, right. right. Oh. Referee is taking a good look. Oh. How is Sammy still standing? Oh, and he hits And he fires ball. right back. Yeah, you don't want to make the mistake here with Sammy. It might go to another round. And another knee. Yushri is stalking Elbows. him down. We've got 20 seconds left in the round. Can Sammy survive? Another knee from Belgari. But Sammy, tough as coffin nails. 10 seconds. Here we go. There it is. Eating a few more shots. But Sammy's saying, oh, no. shake yeah, his Sammy and a head kick. back. Sammy's still there. Oh, man. Good. Wow. Warriors. Oh, what an end to that round. Belgari throwing knee after knee, cutting open Sammy, and really looking like he was going to finish that there. But the toughness of Sammy, unbelievable. He's still wobbly. Look at him. Very few human beings get through that round. Uh, there was about a minute of violence from Musri in there that was equal parts elegance and vulgarity, man. It's. Once he's got him hurt, so fake, lots of fakes to set up those knees. Goes to the body. Look at the body language from Sami now in the corner, and his eyes damaged badly. You can, he took a lot of abuse. And there's, there's a, a hard you can knee. See the way his head bounced up after that. He's calling him on, and he's getting his wish. There's there it the is. Knee. Boom. And That's oh, oh, man. Oh. That looked over, but no, Sammy's so mentally tough. The way he pops back up, defending himself. And Sammy is Second up hats. for this third oh, out of third five round. rounds. Yusuf is right in the middle of the cage already. He can Sammy smell is blood. Too. He can yeah. see blood. Sammy knows he has to come up to the middle of the cage. If you if you linger back and start to shrink okay. away, it's not good. The doctor's there having a look at that left eye. The eyes closed. This could be he, called off here. He, he said still see. two and one. He saw yeah. or guessed right twice. He won't quit. No, he will not. Doctor might make him, though. You can just see the eye there, but just. You know for sure that that is where the Yushri is going to pile shots on. She held up two, and he said two. She held up one, and he okay, said one. Okay, it's being cleared by oh, the man. doctor for another round. What a title fight we're having here. Yusri's trying to intimidate him a bit now. Very smart gamesmanship. Here we go, third out of five rounds. Sami's got to know that that eye's not going to last for five rounds. Watch out for right head kicks and right right hands to the left eye. You can also expose the body. It's called numerical weakness. When you assign too much defense to one area, you leave the rest undefended. So the body will now be available also if he's trying to protect his eye. And They're talking to each other. The two of them are going hard. Yusuri's got a really good question mark kick as well. Still two more rounds, but interesting tactic just to... Oh! oh, oh. Look at this. Spinning back fist to turning side kick. And they're still just talking. Sammy chatting breeze. Sammy is one of one, man. I can say one thing for sure. Whoever walks away with this title will have earned it. Yeah. The uh, Sammy is hard. Oh, oh, There's the overhand, right. man. Power. Look at look at the heart on this guy. Good job by Yusri to get away from that power. 
I like that Yusu is being patient. Yeah. There's no need to rush. You're up two rounds. The guy's eye is going to close more if you touch it just yep. a few times. And Body's available. And he showed that same patience in that last round. Rather than swarming, he just put attention on him. Landed his shots. Oh, Beautiful body again. shot there. You go again. That'll take the win out of your sails. Yeah. That's what we were talking about when you assign your defenses heavily in one area. You leave something else. Oh, undefended. There's that Brazilian arc that Stefan was talking about. Hey, if you fake low. And we have it at the start of the round. Sammy's hand was right by that eye. But after a couple of those body shots from Yushri, you see his left hand has just dropped lower down to cover his stomach, as Robin was pointing out. Taking his time, waiting for the right opportunity to end the fight. Mm -hmm. Smart, mature. There's the knee again. About halfway through the third round. Halfway Elgari on the ascendancy, but you can't count Sammy out now. Halfway through the round. The knee again to the sternum. That stabbing kick just sucking the air out of Sami there, Balgari. Sami with a good shot there. Yeah, Yutri is going to try to slide back when that happens and impale him on it. A shot, punch. Again, Belgari just trying to walk him down here. He can start mincing those legs too if he wants to use three now. Beautiful jab. Stiff jab. Did Stefan make a Stefan, did Yushri make a mistake not coming out a little bit harder here? Oh. He's waiting for the right opportunity to come. He and he's still winning the round. Get caught with, with an overhand or being taken down again, you know? He's still winning the round. Uh, so, you know, if you win through three of five, you've really put your guy in a bad spot. And you got him hurt, and you got an eye closing. Although, as I say that, Sammy has a few good volleys. He's still in this. There's no quit in that man, no. Nice little combination there with the overhand right to the left kick. But Yushri was wise to it. Up the middle. It's like flipping a table in a, in a cowboy movie. Just clears the whole area. You can come out shooting. Good single actions from Yushri, but want to see combinations, especially with the eye being closed. It's going to be hard for Sami to react on those. Beautiful knee to the body there by Yusri, and I hear his corner asking for follow-up. Start with the hands, there's a drop in the knee. Ten seconds left. Oh, spinning back Ooh, place by Sami. Ate that. Another one coming through from Sami. You want one more here for either guy. Oh! That was after the bell. Yeah, that was... I think he launched it as the bell was happening. Referee said time, and it connected just after. Very close, but an interesting round there. One that maybe at the end of round two would have expected Belgari to come out stronger, more powerful, try and finish it, but very controlled performance and would probably have to give him the points there. Yeah, yeah he did all the touching, you know? Touch the face, touch the body. We already know yeah. the doctor is going to take another look at the eye of Sami. And you know it's going to be closed a little more. Oh, yeah, 100%. So this could, could just get stopped at some point, which is also wise from U3. Why roll the dice too much? This thing is let it, let the thing unfold. Let it unfold the way it's going to. I wonder if we'll get a look at the eye over. Yusri looks like a baby face. <laughs> Seconds out for round four. And Sammy looks like a 
<laughs> been in a fight. Look at this, man. And Sammy is just okay, grinning in Yusuru's face, ready to go again. Yusuru's like, yeah, okay. One in a million fighter, Ahmad Sami. It's a round. It, it's an interesting strategy. Like, you know, if you can shake Yusuru, or you can get him overly aggressive, or you can get him to make a mistake, that's what you need now. So every tool at your disposal you want to use, and Sammy is using it. That smiles back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we're in the championship rounds now, the four out of five rounds. This is where title holders are made. Good calf kick by you three there. And Sami was reaching for it with his hand. Yeah, and that's uh, that's uh, time to go to the head kick then. Fake the low and go high. <laughs> Sami's still shaking his head when the shots come in. But he seems to be resorting more to these wild swinging overhands and leaping in. And if he goes that route, it's just going to leave openings for Yusri. Yeah, and it really could be because he's fatigued, his body's beat up, and that's what he can physically do right now, you know? He's a little slower, he's worked so hard, and he's absorbed a lot of punishment. So, so the body starts giving out on you a little bit. And it seems those knees in the second round have just dissuaded Sami from shooting any sort of takedown. Because you would assume that that would be his route to winning this fight. Try and take it to the ground. He Have it where his eye is not so important, but that's how he ate that knee that closed up that eye. He might just feel like he doesn't have the energy to, to you know, initiate takedowns. And if he fails once or twice, he'll find himself out here completely zapped. That was that question mark kick again. Uh, Beautiful body shots by Ustri. He's covering the body a little bit there, too. There it is again. He barely missed. Thing. Touched the eye, I think. Yusri just disengages on those, and Sami Kent doesn't have the horsepower to drive deeper. There's a good knee by Yusri again. Good front kick. Oh, there was some venom in that. I was hunting him down. Yeah. Can go back to the leg anytime he wants to. Sami's full weight on both feet, so you can smash those legs if he wants. But he wants the body. Yeah, and you can see his, after he hits that body a bit more, he's going up top. <laughs> Belgari is put, like putting some more pace in this round for sure. Yeah, he looks fantastic tonight through three and a half rounds. Smart, mature, exciting, aggressive, intelligent. There's no reason any or big organization on this planet doesn't want to use no. Belgari. With his skill set, he had to develop a couple things, and he's done so. But he's a phenomenal striker. I do hope, win or lose, I mean, that Sammy's still very dangerous. But win or lose, I, I hope we get another fight or two out of U3 at LFL, but I'm uh, not certain he won't be in oh. a different three letters next. For sure, I want to, I want to see him defend the title. If he wins, I still, yes. that we're talking yeah. about this fight is won. We've still got a round and a bit to go, and Sammy has that dog in him. There's no quiz. And he threw an, an uppercut there and connected on the eye. You saw Sammy reaching for his eye. One good shot on that eye and it's done. Yeah, I mean, he could have little, feel little bits of sand in there, a little, you know, if something has happened to the occipital bone. It's a really distracting experience in the middle of a fist fight with Yusri. And we'll see, you've got just over a minute left in this four out of five rounds for this light heavyweight title. Belgari moving ahead on points, but Sami is sticking in, and if you stick in in this game, you've always got a chance. Yep. And this seemingly has been the round of Belgari just going to town on the body of uh, Sami. Yeah, this is maturity, though. You know, he's pressuring and he is aggressive, but he's not rushing anything. He's not absorbing any damage. He doesn't need to absorb. Great leg kick there by Yusri. Crushing the legs, smashing the body, pulverizing the eye. Ahmed Sami is tough, and he has been in some tough fights, but most humans never absorb this amount of punishment through four rounds. No. 
combined punishment from the feet all the way through to the head. And 10 seconds left is usually going to throw some big shots. Maybe a knee, one more knee. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. There's a little bit of spice in this. But fourth round, Sammy, who would have thought after the end of that second round that Sammy would still be standing and throwing, shooting for takedowns and trying, but here we are. Yeah, that's just a credit to who he is as a human and a man and, a, and an athlete. You know, he's, most people don't aren't still here. But it is now Yusri's job to get him out of here, no matter how tough he is. Yusri's final assignment to this, two assignments, don't get caught with something crazy and uh, finish this fight. It looks like the fight will continue. I can't see a doctor in there on the outside of the cage, but hasn't decided to enter in. So it looks like Sami will see the fifth and final championship round. And he's, he deserves that fifth he round. He does. He earned it the hard way. If, it, if it's safe to continue. Yep. Hey, give him that chance. Let's see if Yusri can make a real statement here. Always, guys. Okay, a we ton are of here. respect for okay, each other ready? as well. Yeah. Fight! We are here. Seeing that. The fifth and final round of the of our co-main event for the light heavyweight title: Sami versus Belgari. Five minutes for them both to leave it on the line. Here we go. <laughs> For you three, you know, you would have gone back to that corner and said, we love everything, right? We are going to be defensively sound, take them when it's there and try to finish this fight. And for Sammy, you know what you got to do. We lost all the rounds and uh, we got to get knuckles on this guy somehow or get him down and get on top and elbow him. But both of those two things are much easier said than done. When you have a man like Yusri Belgari in front of you, almost anything is easier said than done. It's a good jab by Yusri again. Every single time Sami sees an opportunity, he's still throwing. Yep. He's not just surviving. No, he believes he can finish this fight. And that's that's where it starts. You gotta at least believe. He's still explosive. Good overhand by Yusri. Oh, yeah, you want the pressure on Sami here. That's a good uppercut. Yeah. Single leg by Sami. Okay, he's just three sides up here. So let's see what Belgari's jiu-jitsu got to get his to. Yeah, he's got to get his thigh out, which he did. And now watch. Oh, oh, very smart that, choice. Oh. But that cut has opened back up on his head, yep. and Sami is now gushing claret. Oh. And you can see every time Belgari hurts Sami, you can tell because Sami shakes his head saying no that yeah. Not. He's special. He's he's a wild one. You put you're welcome Ahmed Sami on any fight card anywhere in the world anytime. Oh, this has been an incredible performance of heart, grit and skill. Ooh. Right up the middle. Body, head. Look at Sami's face, man. It's a bloody mess. It's cut up as like a bowl of spaghetti. When Yusri's throwing front kicks up the middle, and he's trying to stunt on him a little bit here, and which you've earned the right to in these final two minutes. You got a guy who can't move very well anymore, can't see very well anymore. This is your time. You built 13 or 23 minutes to be able to create these moments, and now you now you do them. And we're over halfway done with the fifth and final round of this light heavyweight title fight. Can Sammy pull something out of the bag? Or is Yushri going to cruise to a performance? Going to the body with a hook kick. Good block there by Yushri. Natural Yusri. check, yeah. Yusri's front hand is low, I think on purpose, just to be able to come from underneath the peripheral. And to invite an attack. Oh, there's oh, another, there's another jump in the... 
He's got him hurt again, I think. Under 90 seconds remaining. You can walk him into the right head kick here. Just over a minute left. Sammy's still trying. That little stutter step to a half a Superman punch. Another jab to the body. But Yushri in a minute here could do with unloading. A highlight, a highlight finish. Oh, oh he hits a beautiful man. left. Yeah, gorgeous backing up. And a good right hit. Fade away, right? Sammy didn't see that one coming. 30 seconds. Sammy's got to land something big, and Yusri's still trying to finish. See that low left hand? 30 seconds left. In this fifth and final round. Sammy leaping in there, throwing that Hail Mary shot. His body won't do what he wants it to do now, though. The legs, the, the core, it's all been mangled. Incredible amount of respect for Sami here. Oh, and so, so tough. Oh, oh we're about to finish so here. Tough. And Yushri is piling it on. He's styling on him now. Wow. What a fight. And there we have it. For all intents and purposes, that must be Yushri Belgari with the light heavyweight title for LFL. But what a performance by Yusri, a Rolls Royce striking show, and Sammy, a tough, oh, hard, nuggety performance. It just, you know, Sammy didn't have enough left in the body, in the, in the machine to get there, but he just wouldn't quit just wouldn't and it's an exhibition of who he is um but uh at the same time yusri belgari who he is is an artist of violence and uh, he showed that through 25 minutes vicious vicious 25 minutes when i go in uh, presumably to speak to your new champion yusri you know i gotta ask him if, has he ever hit somebody so many times all over <laughs> the body and the guy still kept coming and i think the answer is either rarely or never. It was a relentless performance from both men. But you can see just the shots that Sami was eating here. And stayed in the game, kept swinging, kept looking for that shot. But in the end, it really felt Stefan that Yushri had had his distance sorted out and was never in that much danger. Yeah, no, Sami had a couple Good moments here and there, landing some good shots. Never gave up, but it was usually controlling the fight, landing good shots. Beautiful jump in knees, high kicks, front kicks. Very good performance here. Showed a lot of growth in this fight. Another decision against Sami, but a completely different fight this time. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, first of all, first of all, a big and big applause for these two fighters. Ahmed Sami, Yusri Belharawi. Five rounds of five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, and the winner and the champion in the light heavyweight division is the man in the red corner, Yusri. <laughs> Congratulations, Yusri Belgaroui, new light heavyweight champion here at LFL. My man, have you ever smashed somebody's legs, body, and head up that much and they kept coming? That's my wife. <laughs> joke, 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 joke. No, no, look. Uh, it was, a, I look, I enjoyed it a lot because uh, I think I hit him with the hard shit and he kept coming, you know. He's a soldier, I really, really respect that. Also, you guys gave me shit last time and the time before. I'm like, ah, 20 seconds, ah, first round, I paid for the ticket. So I had to give you five rounds this time, right? <laughs> that was five rounds of extreme violence. Yeah, that's not my props, that props goes to uh, Sammy. He kept on trying. I remember in the fifth round, I was like, oh, like the last 30 seconds, I was like, 
is it like, look, I can't ha let this happen, that he's going to win this shit and become, a, you know, a legend immediately, you know? So, I, you know, I just tried to win a lot. I did try to finish him, I swear. Oh, you can tell. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. No, no, no doubt there. And that's another reason. Um, you know, the, I got the honor today to have one of the biggest legends of combat sports in my fucking corner. If I could do 10 rounds, I'd do 10. Just to hear him coaching from the side, man. And thanks a lot to my coaches and brothers, man. Mentors, father figures, real brothers. And of course, the people that come and keep on coming. Like, to make you proud, uh, that is so, means so much for me. Because, you know, you've been following me for a long time, you know, ever since kickboxing. And I'm uh, happy to finally get this one. Now we're going to keep, uh, keep it going, right? We're going to get some more gold. Thank you so much. Congratulations on a masterful performance. Yeah. Shall I? Uh, well, shall, shall I do a little rap, or is it now enough? Or should I leave? Huh? A little rap. Let me, let me hold the mic. Let me see. I rarely let someone hold the mic, but you were in. All right, can you do the boom, boom, clap? Like, fucking we will rock you? Give me, especially in here. I went here. Boom, boom, bust. Boom, boom, bust. Come on, come on. Yeah. A little story, yeah? Schaduw boxen in het scheme licht, alleen op straat. Regel op langs mijn gezicht. Beelden strijden, doe bestrijden, doe me ogen dicht. Mijn tijd is hier, alles was het waard voor dit. S'nachts werken aan de deur voor mijn huur. Bleef wat tappen op die zak, misschien een heter dan vuur. Rennen in de winter, het was donker en kaal. Met me geen geld in mijn zakken, maar mijn ogen op gaan. Ja, huh. yeah. daarom ben ik weer niet meer. Ja, ik weet niet meer, maar. Haha, <laughs> thanks a lot. Hou van jullie, maar. <laughs> Your winner and the new LFL Light Heavyweight Champion, Yusri Belgaroui. An excellent fight there for the Light Heavyweight title. And Belgari comes out a deserved victor. We have a little bit of rap as well. Uh, for the non-Dutch speaking people at home, Stefan, can you give us a little, um, I'm not gonna ask for a rendition, but maybe a, a summary of the lyrics. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know what the lyrics were. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not really into the Dutch rap scene, but uh, he did a good job. The, one of the, the, the times before this, he sung uh, Andre Hazes yeah. in, uh, in the other venue. So um, he knows how to steal the show, yeah. not only with his fighting, but also yeah. with his singing. He he's does, a performer. He's a, he's a showman as well as a, he's a showman as well as a fighter. We can see there, and what a, what a co-main event that was for light heavyweight title, but we've still got the main course to go. Mario Pinto, you can see there, versus Kasim Aras. Like, really drowned him. I want him to get tired and want to give up. Up game, stand up. I am ready for everything finish my opponent and just be stuck to them, give them no time to breathe. I fight against guys who was two meter ten. He doesn't react, he has very low volume in his striking. For me, every fight is serious and uh, I respect every fight and every fighter. It doesn't matter how I feel, I have to get the job done. I will surprise the people. Before we start the main event of the evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you get your tickets for the Levels Fight League number 12 on the 21st of April. So make sure you get them. The main event of the evening, the main event of the evening is a uh, title fight, an LFL title fight in the heavyweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner representing Germany, Kazim Ara! Kasim Aras, the ex Bellator contender in the heavyweight division. This is a man who's fought some of the best, some of the hardest men in the world. And he was going to put up the sternest test Mario Pinto has ever faced. Yeah, just his body type alone, when combined with his skill set, makes him a very unique fighter to fight. Stefan, did you ever fight a five foot nine ish heavyweight? Uh, do you know Mark Hunt? Uh, yeah. They, they tend to have a lot of power. Yes, that's right. That's right. 
It's, uh, well, and th in the little warm-up sequence, you see him uh, throw a left hand to an overhand right yep. in tight to the double leg or the high crotch. That is the prototype of how a little guy like this goes. If he knocks you out with that overhand right, great. And if not, he falls into a takedown. Yeah, that's, that's the question about this fight. When he gets a hold of him, we know he has the power to take him down. Can he get in the position to get a hold of him, though? Does he have yeah. the speed? Does he have the footwork to close the distance and start working his wrestling? Oh, I'm into it. Well, I'm feeling it. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, representing Portugal, uh, Mario Pinto! What's there to say about Mario Pinto that we haven't already? He, in one night, he won our heavyweight Grand Prix at LFL for three separate fighters on the same night, being the youngest athlete there. And he tore through them with some absolute top knockouts. Just a smooth, relaxed, athletic, springy fighter who really, at 25 years old, a veritable baby in the heavyweight division, has so, so much potential. Yeah, this is why you come to a great show like Levels Fight League, because you get to discover somebody like this. You know, that one night he broke out with three wins, but he's looked phenomenal. He's very sophisticated. He's got a, a gorgeous flow to the way he moves his feet. He sees everything beautifully. When he's on, you still got to coax that performance out of yourself and be at your best. But when he is at his best, it is a treat. Yeah, he's going to be one of fighting like a matador tonight, because he's going to rush him like a bull. Yes. Although. He looks more like a rhinoceros than a bull, this man, Kasima Ross. It's true. This man is a human tank. Yeah, that's a very unique heavyweight. And if Aras is going to win, and if Pinto has one flaw, it is a maybe lackadaisical slow start that can get him in trouble. And if Aras comes out fast, strong, aggressive, he can maybe shock Pinto and that he's that the, the laissez-faire after chat. Wow. So with Pinto, it's a feature, not a bug. That relaxation works for him also. It's part of what makes him a winner. Uh, but yes, you're right. Well, it also makes you vulnerable. Fighting out of the blue corner from Germany. 36 years old, stands in at 5 feet, 10 inches, 178 centimeters, with 11 professional fights on his record, 8 victories, 3 defeats. Representing KKS Sparta Aachen, Kazim Adams! His opponent in the red corner from Portugal, 25 years old, 6 feet 5 inches, 196 centimeters. Seven professional fights on his record. Seven victories representing the fight zone London. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the LFL heavyweight champion. He is Mario Pinto. And we'll see here from the tail of the tape, it really is a tale of two different body types. We have the long and rangy Pinto with the short and squat Aras, and expect both of them to fight in the way that their bodies yep. have presented themselves. And, you know... When you're... this LFL fight, title fight in the heavyweight division is scheduled, five rounds of five minutes. The referee is Mr. Daniel Sharifi. The, the easy way to say it is to say Mario Pinto has a large reach advantage, but it's not a disadvantage to Kareem. Fight hard, fight clear. Listen to my comments all the time. No questions. Touch gloves if you want. Step back. It's not a disadvantage to Kareem because it's how he lives every fight. He's always fighting somebody whose attributes are longer than his, so he's developed a style. In fact, he's harder to fight because you rarely fight a guy like him. And here we go, the final fight of the evening, a championship bout for the heavyweight belt of LFL. Five rounds of five minutes, two excellent fighters. Stephanie liked the way Kasim's come out. Um, I thought he would rush him right away, but he's, he's taking his time, but this is what I expected. There's the overhands. 
There's the power. But. Yeah, he wants to use his hands first and get uh, Pinto to have to react to his hands. It'll let him get underneath to the hips a little easier. Pinto moves out of the way with great ease, though. Yeah, it's flowing nice. Yeah, really, really good footwork. Just chop that calf as well. When a man who's uh, 111 kilograms kicks you like that, you feel it. Aras is showing him the block. That the, one of the great small man weapons is the overhand right up over the shoulder, but uh, Pinto caught it with the shoulder, the deltoid. There, see, he's catching those, seeing them and catching them. Pinto, and Pinto doesn't up. even blink though when he blocks those. Yeah, it's beautiful to see. Floats away to make to increase the gap. As you advance a, a foot, he he recedes a foot and then he takes it off the arm. I always love how he's moving his hands. He's like calculating. I can throw this one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. And in the first round, he's really taking his time. And then the longer the fight goes, the more he starts throwing his combinations. He is going. You know, that right hand, if it comes one more time, Pinto's going to impale him on something as he comes in on it. You can't just throw that same tool at, at Mario Pinto a third and a fourth time, or he'll catch you. And you'd expect as well, Pinto, obviously a teammate of, um, of uh, Kamali, who fought earlier, who is not exactly the same, but a simple yeah. more squat build. There's a single leg. Interesting, beautiful takedown. Lovely work from Aras. Pinto right back up. The only thing, the you know, second to not getting taken down is getting right back up. Second best. He did it perfect. Mm -hmm. Now he can open up a bit more. And that explosion doesn't even look like Pinto has broken a sweat, even after springing up so athletically and powerfully then. He now knows if he gets taken down, he can get right back up, initiate a stand-up sequence, and get back to work. Now he's just touching with the jab. It's also telling lies with that jab. That's not his full-speed jab. He touched him with there twice. It's a deceptive jab to make him underestimate him. That's a good over there. He got us. He's got his hands locked. He's going to take him down. Oh, man. Beautiful work. Right back to four points and right back. Watch for knees. Pinto right back up again. And Aras stays on him. Pressure in him. Into defense. Looking for a way to drop down to his legs again. Look at, look at the legs on Aras. Like tree trunks. Yeah. The size of my whole body. <laughs> And having the weight of someone like Aras just pushing you against the cage like that is not pleasant. But again, look how calm and collected Pinto is. It's very difficult to off-balance him. Yeah. Spin around and get back to the center. It's like off-balancing a fire hydrant. <laughs> but you're right, you just move around him. Look at the look on the face of Mario Pinto, though. Yeah, Mello. This way he operates best. It's a good elbow by Aras. Yes, very good. But this is the fight Aras needs to be taking to Pinto if he's going to win this fight. It's another good calf kick. He's eating that leg up. Look at him. It's uh, his red his leg. leg is red raw tomato it's color. Oh, too. Look at this. Two strips, two red strips. One high on the calf, one low on the calf. Nice side kick yeah. there. Front leg side kick. Uh, these jabs are very, very, like, it's like an off-speed. That's a good, yeah, good nice. choice. Good shot to the body before that. So now he's got a rasp backing up. This is when you want to to unload a bit if you're Pinto. That's it. I wonder what Aras is doing now. Yeah, trying to say, come to the fence, and then he can attack off the fence. But he also might have, kick that. might have just hidden that his calf is hurt, too. That might be what he's doing here. I don't think he can really hide that anymore. No, his I calf know. is hurt. Yeah, yeah, we know it. It's a different color to his other oh. leg. But that is a, over a five-round fight. That's going to stop Aras's explosivity, yeah. the ability to come in for those takedowns. And you saw, arguably, Aras's most successful moment in that first round was rushing in with some overhand rights and then shooting for, for uh, Pinto's leg. And if Pinto can take that away with those calf kicks, 
then he takes away yes. Aras's biggest weapon. Yeah, he's very strategically sound. Gokan Sari charm in the corner of Kasim Aras, one of the best heavyweights in Bellator. Yes. He's one of his main training partners as well, who's also a very good boxer, so he had a really good camp to prepare for so Mario Pinto. Two successful takedowns, this one off of the overhand right in deep. One was a high crotch, one was a double leg, but both of them, Mario just made the gap and got up. Very technically sound there, especially when Aras would have been licking his lips thinking, okay, now I can work, now I can use this like squat low center of gravity to gain some position. Look at the way yeah. Aras is moving on that leg though. Trying to work it out, but it ain't working out too easy. Nope. Uh, yeah, from uh, from my spot here, from where we are, it's gross. Like, it's purple and red. I don't know if it comes across on camera the same way as it It's already raised and expect Pinto to throw another sh shot there very soon. Yeah, and you can fake it, too, to, to make him react. He's got something that he needs to protect more. You draw his response. Oh, there was a good yeah, left hook by Aras, though. Pinto's got a really good chin as well. He's eaten a few big shots without even blinking. Yeah, yeah his, his serene nature just really suits him. It's super authentic to him. Like, he's kind of a fiery guy at times in real life, but then by the time he's fighting, it's just peace. He's at peace in here. Kasim Aras will need to start moving forward soon, or that leg is just going to get chewed. Oh, that's a good yeah, that's a kick good by Aras. Another yeah. one. Very good choice. Couple. He's trying to give give back to Pinto what Pinto gave to him. We talked about that in some other fights tonight. You cannot just give away a range and let him kick you. You got to kick with him. You've got to be dangerous there too. This is our second round of a five-round fight for the heavyweight title. The defender, Mario Pinto, in the orange shorts, throwing a brutal leg kick that's answered back by Aras in the gray. And Aras gives him one back and then goes to attack that leg. See if you can get him up again. It's so easy for Aras to get him up because he's already that, that yeah. low on his leg. <laughs> Now, Pinto's just going to be heavy here. Body lock. Got his hands locked. Lifts him. Last warning. Yeah, lifts him up. Okay, so the referee just gave Pinto the last warning for the cage, for holding on to the cage. If he does it again, the referee may take a point from him, which, if this fight goes a distance, could be the difference yeah. between winning and losing. In my opinion, they should already deduct the point when you stop a takedown like that. Yeah. Or they should arrange you into the takedown. Pinto made a gap and then slipped out the side. Back to distance. Back to distance and back to that calf. Yep. Back to the calf and the jab. These are his bread and butter yep. in this fight at the minute. But Aras is biting back with those. It's very smart. That adaptation by Aras here in round two is making a big difference. Just about two minutes left in this second of five rounds for the heavyweight strap of LFL 12. A very patient match fought by these heavyweights here, dominated by calf kicks so far. And jabs now. It is the one of those signs of a brilliant fighter when you can win a fight with just a jab and a low kick, and, and it can be done. It's the blitz again from Maras. But great job by Pinto to move out of the way. Great ease as well. He looks very fluid out the yes. way. The way he's wriggled out, slid out of any takedown attempts from Aras, but Aras got a nice jab through there and hit Pinto right on the chin. Pinto slides sometimes and floats sometimes, but uh, Aras now in deep. Pinto feeds one hand to the other, and now he's free to elbow. If there's any trouble from Pinto's team, though, they will be questioning how easily 
Aras is managing to get hold of him in his hips. So far, the takedowns haven't been working for him, but they are there. You hear uh, heavy breathing. I think that's Aras's heavy breathing. It appears you don't see the chest rising as much with Pinto. So Pinto may be making Aras do more work in these exchanges, which would be a great accomplishment in here. I always enjoy doing that, being the taller guy, making him work when you have the fence in your back. You can, you can put it to great use, tire him out like that. Yeah, and it's working here. And then if you separate here, you'll see him take a big breath, and you know it's time to attack. We've got 10 seconds left, so the fight is probably going to end in this little clinch position. Maybe a knee, maybe a high knee. Oh, and elbow instead. One second remaining. That's that's a much tighter round, but uh, make sure, ladies and gentlemen, you buy your tickets. We have to see how he recovers, how how much air Aras gets into the lungs, and how well he recovers. Yeah, very close fight here. So far, Pinto doesn't seem to have uh, moved up the gears so much but there are still three rounds of this heavyweight title fight to go, so there's plenty of time. And while Aras has got his uh, arms on the cage, breathing a little bit heavy. Pinto is chill. Pinto is chill. He doesn't even seem to have built up that much of a sweat. He's breathing easy. He's listening to his coach. His mind seems really, really good in this game. And can you imagine if you're all a pretty mentally tough fighter and then you win three fights in one night, for the rest of the time, you're never gonna, it's always only one fight. Like, just that accomplishment gives you a sense of, you know, increases your mental strength. Okay, we're going to the third round of this heavyweight title bout. The challenger, Mario Pinto in the orange. So the champion, Mario Pinto in the orange, and the challenger, Aras in the gray. Fight! It's gonna be... A really heavy blitz, I think. Heavy uh, action from Aras in the first 90 seconds of this round. It's his best chance, this, this first half of round. I think that's exactly what his corner told him. One would assume the longer fight does benefit Pinto, and what a beautiful calf yeah. kick. Buckled the leg of Aras. Shows a lot of movement, does Pinto. Subtle, subtle hand movement. See, to up, down. And if his man starts disregarding it, then you throw straight punches. One minute down, round three. Pinto seems to have found the read on Aras's calf kicks. He's now moved out the way of a couple of them. Yeah, Pinto's landed some some light touches in this round, and he's avoided it, almost everything coming back at him. He seems to be getting better as this fight goes. That has been the case every single time we've seen Mario Pinto fight, though. It's true, and that time he just sort of circled out of that takedown. It's really gorgeous uh, uh, movement of his feet, just floated out of the way. And you question whether Aras has the energy, whether his ability to Pinto's ability to float and move out of it is coming because Aras has just lost to some of that zip. And now Pinto is starting to up the pace, put a bit of venom into his strikes, put some more combinations together. Yeah, the jabs touching so consistently, it's opening up other things for Mario. You can really see Pinto's loosening up now. Yeah. And Aras is tightening up a bit. Yep. And that contrast you're starting to, is why you're starting to see him pull away through these two minutes. It can shift again, it can swing the other way again. But I love it when he's just gentle with it. And there he rotates again, but Aras does catch the thigh. And so far, Aras hasn't managed to complete and secure a takedown. We'll see if this is his moment. Just under half the round to go, this would be huge for Aras to complete this. Aras is trying to get around the legs of Pinto, but Pinto is doing a good job putting his legs up against the fence. So he cannot lock his hands there, he cannot lift them up like that. Pinto feels a lot more stable when he's got this man's head up really high, you know? 
and, and his chest up really high. Now Aras is dropping lower again. He's so strong when he's on your legs. It is fascinating, though, that the anecdotal evidence of their bodies and their breathing says that Aras is actually using more energy in these exchanges. Like Stefan said, when the taller fighter's on the fence, they can use the leverage to actually make the guy work harder. Put, put your weight on him as well. It's going to be a big 90 seconds, maybe, for, for Pinto. He's got a lot of gas in this last 90 seconds of round one, and Aras might be slowing down a touch this round. Well, that jab, every time Pinto is throwing it, is just rocking Aras' head back. It's not much. Oh! That's dirty. And I mean that in the, in the nicest way possible. And you can see that Aras is really not comfortable putting weight on that front leg. He's just letting it lift up. And that's just slowing down his ability to move quickly. Jabs and low kicks, baby. That's been the whole, the, the heavy part of the, men, it's done the heavy lifting on the menu so far for Pinto. Yeah, you want to kick it, kick out that leg again one more time if you can. It's mesmerizing sometimes to watch Pinto, just these slow hand yeah. movements, just touching, touching. It's weird, oh, though. Kick. He's not throwing power in his shots. Oh. It's weird to watch. Yeah, it, it's but, almost like point fighting in its own way. Uh -huh. but, uh, but it's working, too. What, it would be great to land five heavy jabs, but, you know, 50 light jabs uh, or flicking jabs, elastic jabs, also work <laughs> really well. And it appears like he's not exerting himself, but oh. he's hitting harder than it looks. Oh, it's a good overhand from Maras again. Pinto hesitated just for a second, didn't like what he saw, and then went into the, the chest to chest. It'll be interesting whether this is a strategy of Pinto to throw softer shots, to piece him up, to whether it's luring Aras into a false sense of security, whether there's some wider tactical reason not to put as much force behind them in these first three rounds, and whether he's going to start putting a little bit more weight behind his shots in these championship two. But, you know, again, it's one of these things that's a feature, not a bug. It is not a, a flaw that he's throwing it relaxed. It's to his benefit. He lands so many. He picks you apart. He discourages you. And then he's also been lying to, to his man. He's been uh, pattern setting him with an expectation of how fast he is. And later he can go faster and, and hit harder. So it's misdirection. And it's really, really smart. And it will be intriguing to see the judges because I think you could make a statement, you know, make a reasonable guess here that it could be 2-1. That second round, I feel, could have gone either way. First and third, probably have to give it to uh, Pinto. I wouldn't be surprised if Pinto had all three rounds at all. Uh, but yeah, you gotta you gotta operate under the assumption that the judges may see it different than you when you're in there. So here we are, the championship rounds of our heavyweight title fight at LFL number 11. The champion, Pinto, looks like he's moving ahead in this fight against Aras, but when you're heavyweight, there's power to end the fight at any time. And now it looks like a little bit more venom in Pinto's strikes. Yeah, 100%. Oh. That's what I want to see. Yeah, and that's working because he was, you know, off-speeding it through three rounds. T lots of touching, lots of measuring, lots of you know, gathering of information, and lots of lies. Now he can hit harder. Oh, he's going to line up a right hand, uppercutter, straight right. He's going to be with this reach advantage and that jab finding a home. The defense there by Pinto. Get his leg out, but now Aras has got a body lock, but he hasn't been able to really do anything with it the entire fight when he had body locks. Pinto's have had success just lifting up his center of gravity and just getting him up high and circling up. But a lot harder to do that in round number four than it, than it is in round number one. It's harder for everybody in round number four than it is in round number one. The ref included, the audience included. It's demanding, the corners. It's mentally demanding the deeper you go into a fight. Pinto is trying to 
Open up the arms of Faraz. Create space again. Yeah, you see his left hand in the right bicep. Now digging underneath the armpit to lift the man up. Yeah, he tugs up on him. One with an overhook and one with an underhook. And if it doesn't work and he resists, you drive his head straight down into the mat, you go the other direction. It'd be interesting to see how the judges would score something like this. Because Arras has got control of Pinto, he's stopping Pinto from doing what he wants, but the problem is damage. But yeah, and Pinto stopping him doing what he wants too, because he wants to get a takedown. If all you do is close the distance and close your hands, it's not aggressive enough. It's not, it doesn't have enough intent. Nice. Okay, big Great job by Pinto to spin around. The intriguing whether he uses this as an opportunity to try and do a takedown. So he's going to get the separation here. No, nope. I was going to say when he gets that wrist, but he didn't get the wrist. Instead, Aras joined the hands. So a big opportunity for either men when they disengage here to throw a strike. Shucks him off. So Pinto looking for that oblique kick and that calf kick. He seems to be throwing a few less calf kicks now, which makes me wonder whether he might have hurt his shin in a check because he's really focusing on those obliques on Arras. And then he throws a calf yeah. kick, so it can't be too bad. Left knuckles, right foot. Those have been the weapons for Mario Pinto. It's a good right hand there for oh, Arras. Some combinations coming in from Pinto there. I really believe that if he puts more pressure on Arras and opens up, throws more combinations. Oh, beautiful pivot. Everything he does is good, but... Yeah. I do believe he can finish a Ross. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it's when the time is right. And you know what? The time is right now to open up a little bit. If he's got him fatigued, if he can't get as much, generate as much force because his leg is sore to, from, the, from the mat, now's a good time to open up. When we uh, were watching Pinto fight the last time, now and then I had the idea that he didn't really want to hurt his opponent. And I'm watching this fight and I have the same idea. Now and then he, he has the opportunity to land something big, I think, and yeah. he doesn't do it. I don't understand why. Yeah. Uh, earlier in the fight, I would have said he's conserving his energy. He's uh -huh. going to make it through the five rounds. But at this stage, you know, at the beginning of this round, we saw a little bit more venom in the strikes and we thought he was going to ramp up. But this is the thing that we were speaking about beforehand, this lackadaisical, laissez-faire nature and maybe he's still got a bit of a killer instinct, a bit of knowing when to put the accelerator down to learn. It is interesting because his relaxed nature is a key to him winning also, right? So he's very in line with what he is, but yeah, don't be surprised if in round five he tries to find a minute to really pour it on. Okay. Ooh. A few nice shots there at the end, but that is the fourth and fourth round of our heavyweight title bout. Pinto looking generally in control in that fight, but not really landing that many strikes that are truly troubling Aras. Yes, his leg is eaten up a bit, but there's no way anything he's throwing would really be finishing. You assume, and judging by what you're seeing in the corner, that Aras is going to be even more aggressive here in round five, and that can favor Pinto as well. I mean, you have to do it. You don't have a choice. You're, you're down. Uh, presumably, you need a finish if you're Karim Aras. So he's going to be more aggressive, but that will give Pinto chances too. There are just all those little sophisticated touches. They're so nice to see. I remember when Nick and Nate Diaz started uh, uh, fighting that way, where they would go soft, soft, touch, touch, touch. Uh -huh. There's lots and lots and lots. Yep. And you see it really wears guys down as it goes. It's, it's, oh, it, it hits you, but it also steals, it makes your brain burn sugar. There's so much happening you're trying to navigate. But they really recognized the moment when they had to you're right. put more venom in. Turn that volume up. And we'll see in this fifth and final round of our heavyweight fight where the Pinto There's a good uppercut. That aggressiveness, that strength, so far is looking good. 
I didn't talk to Pinto about this before, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was being truthful yesterday or the day before. He just said, I'm going to look to finish in round four or five. I'm going to do everything I can to be I'm smart. Big knee. Yeah. And then when the time is right, try to finish. And that's what it looks like is happening. Of course, that's risky for him, too. Yes. Yeah. And Aras needs to finish here. We already saw he threw two takedowns very quickly in the round. But some big shots from Pinto there. I love his style. I just love it. He's now got Aras's back against the cage. There's nowhere for him to go. This is a shot. To, this is a chance for him to unload, put a little bit of weight behind some of those jabs and rights. Every single time he throws something powerful, it connects. But then he lets, lets him off the hook again. Yeah, he's in deep this time. He's really good with going from the single and oh. to the double, but good elbows here now. Yeah, ouch. Big shot. Yeah, that'll get you back up. But Aras has Pinto right by Aras's corner, which might help in him completing the takedown. Let's see if he's still got the power to lift them up. Good defense here by Pinto. Lifting the chin. Yep. And then drops down with deep commitment is Kareem Aras. An interesting thing, of course, one would assume that Pinto wouldn't be able to understand what Aras's corner is telling him. No, I don't think he speaks Turkish, but hey. Well, that's, I, don't want, I don't want to assume. Who knows? Who knows? Exactly. Yeah. Keep her on that leg and do something with it. Daniel Sharifi is taking a good look. He wants to see more action here. Yeah. It, and just that little step around might be enough to keep him. No. Nope. Just short elbows there by Pinto. We're just over halfway through the fifth and final round in this heavyweight bout. Aras really pressuring up Pinto against the cage, and Pinto struggling to escape it at this point. And just taking the little elbows where he can get them, and then fighting this. He's heavy now. I appreciate the commitment from Karim Aras because if you could get Pinto down with two minutes left, that'd be the best, you know, position of the whole fight. But if you don't get him down, you might be handing this fight over in the last couple of minutes. And, and that's it. And that just depends on what the judges are seeing in this round. It's very difficult for Pinto to create any distance the way Aras is pressuring him against the fence. But if one man's committed just to grappling and the other one hits, hammer fist, elbows, as small as they are, he'll be the one winning on a good judge's scorecard. The guy trying to get the takedown but not getting it versus the guy who's taking what's there and, and doing damage. Controls the wrist and goes to work. He's getting some elbows in. He's putting a little bit of venom in those. Oh. That forced something from Aras. He's still got the arm lock. Being able to throw hammer fists and elbows. 45 left on the clock. Here we go in our fifth and final round. Can Aras get the takedown he's hunting for? 30 seconds remaining. Watch for Aras to throw the overhand right. And this is it, 30 seconds left. Can Pinto empty the tank? Put something on, try and put this out of the judge's hands. There's a right hand and another uppercut. That's a beautiful combination. Oh, he's got him rock. Awesome. He got it. Why did he wait till the end of the fight to do this? 10 seconds left. Oh, and Pinto he goes to take him down. And he gets it. it. And finishes the fight on top. Yeah. Very
one would assume Pinto has that on the judges' cards, but yeah. when you saw how he acted at the end, when the shots are coming through and he had the violence, where was that earlier in the fight? I'm I think everybody has that same question in their head. We wanted to see more of that. He got him hurt. He almost, he almost knocked him down there. I really believe that if he would have pushed the pace sooner, he would have been able to finish him. But Sometime, if he had finished him in the final 30 seconds, we'd be talking about what a genius he is. So he was trying to set it up to like have a long, masterful performance where he does a little bit of everything. He gets better as the fight goes on and gathers information and then finishes him late. Almost did it. But I, he answered a lot of questions about the other areas of his game, too. You know what's cool, though? At some point in his career, he's going to have to step on the gas sooner. Yeah, you're right. Else, It'll be asked of him, yeah. Yep, 100%. Because now he can get away with it, because he's he's so much better than his opponents. And but, you can see here, just when he's unleashing and changing angles and stepping, he looks unmanageable. Yeah. Yeah. No, he is something special to watch. It's really, really awesome to see him when he's flowing and, and just sort of yeah, and I mean, you can see, look what happened to Harass's yeah. face in those last 20, 30 seconds. Yep. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Big fan. At 25 years old, as we were saying earlier, he is still a, a real young and in the heavyweight industry, so there's a lot of time to get that. But let's not take anything away from Aras. He stuck with that the whole way through the fight. He did a good job. Very tough. A tough Fighters competitor. To the center of the ring, please. Well, of course, ladies and gentlemen, over here in Amsterdam, a big applause for Kasim Aras, Mario Pinto. <laughs> and the winner of this fight, ladies and gentlemen, and still the heavyweight champion of the Levels Fight League. It's the man in the red corner, Mario Pinto! No surprise there. The defending reigning LFL heavyweight champion, Mario Pinto. I saw a little smile when he put this around your waist, just a little one. Yeah, come and put a flag on my back. Let's go. Can I hold the mic? All right. Yeah. First of all, and still, I did it again. I told LFL, I told Donovan, I want experience. Everyone's trying to rush me. They want to rush this nut. I'm taking my time. Let me take it easy, yeah? They sent me a six foot eight dragon black belt and I made him sing tap. They sent me a wrestler. I made him kiss the mat and I pieced him up. This is what I do. I got a great team around me. One of the best teams ever. And we're just growing. Nice and slowly, nice and slowly. For obviously, I couldn't do it without my God. I can't do nothing without him. I'm so blessed. I've got a great team. Me and the big body, Shaw, we did it again. We came, we saw, and we conquered. Thank you to everyone who came and supported me. I've got to give a big shout out to Portugal. Vencemos outra vez, ganhamos, and still campeão. Eu estou lutando por todo Portugal. Guinea-Bissau, Cap Verde, Angola, Mozambique, and também Brazil. Então, obrigado. Thank you to all for coming. I'm so grateful. LFL, we're leveling up and we're getting shit done. Shout out to my team, Fight Zone. Shout out to Fight City Gym. Shout out to my coaches here today. And I'm going to keep growing and growing. I'm taking my time. And don't worry, there's still much more to fear. Yes, congratulations and much love. Your LFL. And only on Viaplay. Well done, sir. Your LFL heavyweight champion, undefeated, undisputed, Mario Pinto. Five fives, baby. Five fives. Embrace the fly. Huh? I took it to the dark place, and I'm still hungry. Woo! Pinto showing a lot of personality there, an excellent fighter who did the job that was set out for him today, but when you have such a high ceiling, when you have so much potential, it's natural that you call for something more. When you can see he could have finished that, it's hard not to want him to reach that and fulfill the promise that he shows. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm curious to see who they're gonna match him up again. Hopefully soon, maybe in April. Yeah, I hope so. I love watching him fight. You know, you, it's one thing to see how skilled somebody is and how well they move. It's another thing to get insight into their thinking. What he understands is he is not a finished product yet. 
He's still developing. Th yes, he's this good, but how good can he get? And that's what a smart young athlete and artist thinks. How do I continue to improve? And uh, that's the path he's on. It's very inspiring. An exceptional talent and one the LFL has shone an incredible amount of light on. The future is bright for Pinto and it is bright for LFL. So make sure that what you do is you go on LFLMMA.com, you find our social channels, you follow them, you go on YouTube, you watch videos from our past 11 events and heavyweight Grand Prix. They're all on there for you to check to find new fighters. You make sure you go and look at uh, Ticketmaster, find out, as you can say there, April 21st, LFL 12. If you're in the Netherlands, come. If you're not, Amsterdam's a great place for a holiday. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Beautiful place. Because Weather is getting better too in April, so. Exactly, right, springtime, terrace weather, cold beers outside. It's a wonderful city for it. So thank you to all the viewers at home and to Robin, Stefan, and everyone involved in LFL for an incredible, incredible evening. Until next time, we'll see you on April 21st. Au revoir and farewell.